Ja, broer. Volgende zal ook nog komen.
spinning.
I can do it.
Park for what should be an exciting game here today. We've got the Momentum Multiplier Titans versus the Warriors in the CSA T20 Challenge. My name is Kariso Maswelele, also known as KG, and with me today I've got Gert Maloney, 
um, who will be joining me for this commentary today. Later on, we'll be joined by Mpendula Magubani. Kurt, welcome to Supersport Park. Keiji, thank you very much and an honor to be with you and Bindulo again. Thank you very much for having us. And uh, yeah, this should be an intriguing one because uh, both teams have played two. They both have won two, but the Warriors sitting pretty on top with a net run rate of over two. So it's all to play for today. First, both of these teams, one of them will suffer their first loss in the CSA T20 knockout. That is the exciting thing, isn't it? And uh, if you just look at the the, the the squads that we've got here together, um, it'll be a very mouth-watering game. Before, obviously, the guys go to the IPL, so we've got the, um, um, the, the Proteas players in the game, which makes it for, uh, more intriguing. I'm sure none of them would want to leave after costing their team to, to <laughs> lose in the match. It's, it's going to be a star-studded day because we got Tristan Stubbs. You've got Aiden Markram, you've got Janssen, you've got Klaassen. It is such a star-studded pack on both sides of these teams. And then you've got up-and-comers like Brietzka still in. It's going to be, Munsami is going, it's going to be a fantastic game with all these star power that's going to come through today. But what star is going to shine this sh- the brightest today is going to be the question. That is the question that everybody needs to answer. I think uh, if you look at Aiden Makram, for instance, he hasn't really fired in the first two games. And uh, today he'll be looking to, you know, get some runs on the board before leaving. Hendrik Klassen is playing in his first game uh, so far. Uh, Breves also hasn't really uh, scored so many runs this season and he'll be looking to make sure that before he heads off to Mumbai Indians um, he scores some runs. So just to go through the teams, uh, the Titans we've got Sibonele Makanya, Deva Breves uh, Rivaldo Munsami, Aiden Makram, Hendrik Klassen Dian Khalim, Coben Bosch Aaron Pangiso, Junior Dalla, um, Tabrez Shamsi uh, that's good. That's a very star-studded oh. team, isn't it? And they've got the number one T20 bowler in the world a year or so ago, and uh, Shamsi, also in this team. Is there going to be turn in Supersport Park? That's the other thing that we need to wait and see. It's going to be a uh, interesting day because both teams have got great all-rounders in their team. They have got one or two game changers in their team, with Shamsi being one of them, Clarsons being another one in this uh, Titans team and then this is going to be a fantastic opener if you take us through that Warriors team quickly KG. Yeah, just the Warriors have got Marku Janssen, Jivishan Pile, Jordan Herman, Sinetemba Tlashile, Matthew Briske, Tristan Stubbs, Andile Mohokani, Patrick Kruger, Beya Sonnepul and Sia Simetu. Oh, what a, and uh, Pile has had a fantastic two games thus far. He's right up there with the uh, run scorers. He's uh, doing pretty well. And uh, it's going to be one of those games where who's going to put up their hand? Yeah. Who's going to fire? Is Stubbsy finally going to fire? He's, he's showing, he showed here and there that he wants to Games, go. Yeah. He wants to get going, but he hasn't gotten going yeah. yet. So that's someone. You mentioned Breves hasn't gotten going yet. We know how destructive he can be, but it's going to be all about the batters today. Yeah. The runs on the board. What do you think is going to be a defendable total? Look, uh, looking at the stats, obviously it says that the p- team betting second or chasing has won 22 times and uh, the team betting first has won 11 times. So that already on itself says that, you know, you need to score runs. Mm. The average score for day-night games is 160 at Supersport Park. I think it might be a little bit under par. I think yeah. you need to get at least at 180. Putting into consideration the team that the Titans have, the betting lineup that the Titans have here today. And uh, as we say that to get us going... Uh, which is something that we've been accustomed to oh. now with the spinner opening the betting and we've got Aiden Makram that will be opening the betting um, and the bowling for the Titans from the Hanops River end. Let's see how it goes. He's going into Brietzka, so it's uh, one protea to the other. <laughs> this ball just nudging it to that mid-wicket for a single. Very interesting that the Titans went with two frontline spinners, if you can talk about, with mm-hmm. Shemzi and uh, Pangiso both playing, which is something that we're not used to seeing at Supersport Park, where they normally will play with one. But I think Aaron Pangiso, the way that he's been bowling, the way that he batted the last game, he forced himself into playing into the game at Supersport Park, and the fact that he can open, he can bowl with a new ball. 
Got uh, Makram now going to Division Pele. Just a dead ball. And I think that might just have answered. There's a bit of kick from the wicket there. It just took off. Just take him, took him on the splice. Pele is not a small gentleman. <laughs> and now they got three spinners in this tight and seam with Markram opening up the bowling. Oh, just one down leg side for a wide ball there for Makram. Um, obviously, the Warriors have got a left and right combination opening up. It always is difficult to be bowling to a left and right because you have to change your fields, your lines, your lanes, and all of that. Ooh, another dot ball there. Division Pele, obviously, also a former Titans player, so he would know their players very well, and he'd also know their, their, their conditions here at Supersport Park. Uh, although he's opened up the bowling a few times, hasn't taken that many wickets, has Markram. Division Pillar just giving himself a bit of room there outside that leg stump, just blocking it back. Yeah, look, I, I think his job is more to, you know, contain almost, almost like making a 19 over game by just coming up with the first over and just going through that first over very quickly. Just Nothing. make sure that that power play doesn't cost him too many runs. Yeah. And doing a fantastic job thus far. Only the two, the wide that he bowled and the one that Brietzka scored. Okay, and good ball to finish the over. And at the end of the first over, the Warriors are one for, for a two for the loss of no wickets. Very good over there from uh, Aiden Makram opening up. Again, when we were speaking a bit earlier about, you know, just how his over is to try and making a 19 over game mm. so you just steal away that first over and just give nothing to the batters and that's exactly what he did there in that first over yeah i think that is the idea is getting that one over done and dusted with he might get a second as well there is something in the pitch for him he does bowl from a very high action he does get a little bit of extra bounce does aiden markram And this is another, oh, another very, very exciting yeah. prospect. Yeah, uh, Lizard Williams, uh, oh. who can forget what he did for the um, um, CSK, the... the, the Joburg Super the Kings. Jo the the Joburg Super Kings, rather, um, in the in the SA20. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, he's, he's a person that's coming from a tournament where he's been taking wickets. Big player. Uh, first up, just pitched up from Lizard Williams and... Uh, Breske just sees that one off, box it to the covers. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting uh, contest. Lizard Williams has got a very good bouncer. And yeah. uh, we know that it, that's a ball that he likes to use a lot. It's just about when they do have a deep square leg. So you can almost see that that ball should be coming sometime. Just on your screen there, you see one of the men of South African white ball cricket over the last two years, Heinrich Larsens. What a fantastic servant he's been. Oh, and Breske decides to come down, tries to hit him over, but just goes over. Interestingly, we've got Coben Bosch at slip. How often do you see a fast bowler feeling <laughs> at, at, at slip? <laughs> that dynamics have changed over the last couple of years. We actually see a guys like even the uh, lanky Janssen, Marco Janssen, doing a lot of work in the slips and in the gully region. But yes, Bosch in the slips. <laughs> But he can't wait to get that white nut in his hand. Ah, no, definitely. Ah, it's again just a bit of a back of a length in. Oh, almost a chance there at the striker's end. Ah, but Deva Brevius that time around not hitting the stumps. Ah, that's, it's only been two overs, but then you face two dot balls, you feel that I need to get off strike. Mm. And it so happens that, you know, you just get one there, drop it down there, and you just go for a single, which creates a, a, a wicked chance for the bowling team. Yeah, direct hit would have been very interesting there. Mm. I think he would have been found wandering. But he did immediately respond to the call yeah. from Brietzka. And that would have been disastrous for the Warriors. It's the last thing you would have want is a man that's pretty much in form Pile mm. being run out for naught. Facing up to Lazard Williams, another interesting contest. Ah, and in that, again, in the back of a length there, just a bit uncomfortable into the body of uh, Division uh, Pillay. Uh, it's, it's very 
um, interesting to see the, how the first few balls have went. We've spoken earlier about what targets you think would be good enough here, and I think the Warriors would know that you need to make use of the power play first up, and then later on also look to, to cash in. And so far, I think the Titans will be happy with how the, the game is going. Another chance for run out. If that was picked up cleanly, I think Bangisu would be very cross with himself. <laughs> it was on his left hand as well. Oh, that would have been very, very close from under 69 there. Adam Pangiso, if he picked that up, oh, it would have been gone. Yeah, it would have been Ketens there with Aaron Pangiso picking that up. But again, it's, it's those things that if you're not getting the boundaries, you just try to get singles as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you end up uh, taking that risk just because you need to get some runs on the board. Very interestingly, no point, no conventional point, rather moving to that gully area in a third man a bit squarer. Okay, and uh, Breske just manages to hit that one to that gully area for a one. A um, bit of temptations early on to Breske to say that point area is opened up. Let's mm -hmm. see what you can do, but it just blocked it out there. Um, obviously, I think the two batsmen are just looking to obviously see what's happening and then assess the conditions and then take it from there. This is the same pitch that also was used for last week Friday, um, for all for the women's and Saturday also for the women's game. So this is a pitch that, you know, the Titans will say that they know a little bit more about how it's, it's playing because of the way they've gone. And as we say that, bowling of change, uh, bowling change immediately from the Hanops River end with Aaron Pangiso replacing Aiden Makram, which is something we're accustomed to seeing now that in T20 uh, cricket, they really just they keep on, they chop and change the, 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 the bowlers quite regularly. Yeah, don't let a batter settle to a specific bowler. Oh, oh first start, creating an opportunity, Brisky just Going outside that leg stump, looking to hit it over cover, but just okay. missing it out. Ah, wonderful start there from Aaron Pangiso. Again, ah. straight up, and they go up, but Empire not interested in that one. Ah, the Titans felt that they were in the game there, but uh, Empire just saying, not out there. Yeah, I think it was more uh, Glassons that was interested in it. <laughs> it was and there's no signal, man. so clearly the Empire feels that that came from the bat. And you know when third man in final leg isn't interested in LBW shots, you know, it's, it's not close. <laughs> but yeah, that very first ball, you can see the bit of pressure just building. It's six for none, busy with the third over already. Power play time is running out. Uh, and uh, this time around, Division play just comes down the weekend, hits it that over mid-off, and they get the first boundary of the day. Very good shot there from uh, Division Pele. He really needed that. The Warriors really needed to break that shackles a little bit. Yes, we see Brietzka try that a couple of times, and the first time that Pele has done it just shows you what form does. Gives you that little bit of extra impetus. Just look at the replay. Just got inside the line of the ball. The ball turning back into him, and just spanked that in the first boundary for the day. Ah, this time around goes for a reverse and a wonderful shot between that point and uh, cover. Very good shot there from uh, from uh, Jivishan Pele. Getting the second boundary, second ball facing from Aaron Pangiso and he gets a second boundary. Very good start here yeah, from uh, Jivishan Pele. Exactly what the Warriors required. The second boundary in this over and also the second boundary in the inning. And see a lovely reverse shot. And once oh. again, Division Pele oh. just manages to get it over that mid-off. Uh, mid-off felt that he had a bit of a chance there, but then it just went over him for yet another boundary. That is three boundaries in, in a row. Yeah, trifecta of boundaries. And Markram just did not have the jet shoes on. He couldn't <laughs> get the hang time to get to that ball. But uh, just alluding him, Pele, what a positive cricket this is. Very subdued start, took five balls to get off the mark. Just the dot ball. Oh, a bit of a misfill there from the from Pangiso and allows them to come through. Wonderful, good over there from the Warriors. They'll be very pleased with that over. And after the third over, the Warriors are 19 for naught.
Yeah, fantastic over for the Warriors and especially Pelé, who's shown this form throughout the season thus far the last couple of games already. And Brietzke will do well just to maybe feed off that energy as well. He's just trying to force the issue a little bit. Maybe just get into a scenario where he can maybe just rotate the strike, get the right-left combinations working for them. And then just let Pelé have a go because he is spanking it all over. Look, he's having a good time out. It's like he's betting on a different surface uh, to what uh, Brisk is betting on. And uh, to go after the man they call the banker for the Titans, very good over from him. And Lizard Williams uh, to continue from the pavilion end. Yeah, he might be the banker, but I think uh, there was a bit of interest charged on those three <laughs> deliveries then. <laughs> Just outside uh, that off stump, just gets a thick um, outside half of the bat, and it goes down to the third man for a one. Um, you would say that it's a good, it's a good, you know, to rotate the strike as you just spoke about a little bit earlier on. Obviously, now they just it got that going. Yeah, fantastic. Just to rotate the strike. Interesting field change for the left hander. They do not have the deep pointer, but the deep third man. Mm -hmm. And for the right hander, they got the deep square, and, and the deep also. They've got the uh, deep point out, as we see a shot of Sabre Shamsi there on the screen. He'll be instrumental in this Titans team. He just moved in from fine leg into the circle there. Ah, once again, Breske trying to just manufacture some shots here. I think you, you summed it up a little bit earlier mm -hmm. to say that, you know, when your partner is doing well and you on the other side, rotate the strike. And that was a perfect opportunity for him outside the off stump, deep cover, just get it down there, get mm -hmm. onto the other side. But uh, that time are they just being a little bit impatient a little bit earlier on, trying to um, be a little bit extravagant. Mm -hmm. It is T20 cricket. Want them to manufacture shots, but also patience does play a, does have its virtue. And just a oh. nice full shot there from uh, Lizard Williams. And I, I, I sorry, KG, <laughs> this has now happened the previous time as well, where there was two dot balls, and then he tried something different. Yeah. The Riggs, we saw the the ram. Now there's two dot balls again. The pressure is back on Brietzka, and. Uh, Who's going to falter first? Lazard <laughs> Williams, we know. Look at the smile. He's talking to Markram. They've got plans in place. They are very comfortable. Yeah. The movement in the field you can see from the Titans is very comfortable. They know they kind of had have a little bit of an upper hand when it comes to Brietzka. Yeah, just a bit of a change field there, um, taking the slip out to that mid-wicket area. Probably looking to go a bit straighter. Brietzka batting deep in his crease now. Ooh. Oh, it's going to leave a mark. It's so one, isn't it? He would feel that he missed that a little bit because that was uh, outside the leg stump. Nobody down there, he had an opportunity to hit it, but unfortunately he didn't that time around. I think teams sometimes don't really know how to approach a T20 game. And uh, I know you want to make use of the, 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 the power play early on. But stats say that if you lose more wickets in the first six overs, uh, three wickets in the first six overs of the game, mm. you are bound, you, you are looking at losing. Not so much about the runs that you have. So keep your wickets and take it deep. Uh, this time around, down the leg side, and he manages to get some good bat on. Oh, and the Empire says it's actually a leg by, and it goes down to that uh, vacant fine leg for a fall. And look, it was very clever batting this time around. Just got inside the line and for the first time, Williams actually fell for it. You can see he just followed him and just straight onto that hip and it just came off the thigh pad. Yeah. And uh, it's four runs for the Warriors. It's exactly what the doctor ordered. This over was heading for another fantastic over for the Titans and one leg by and his runs on the board. It's exactly what you want if you're a Warrior supporter. <laughs> And uh, this time around, Williams just follows him as he goes uh, outside that leg stump and manages just to get a single from it. Uh, you'd say good over. Good over here. Um, and that is four overs down. And uh, the Warriors are 25 for not going at 6.9 to the over. That's going to be a fantastic match. It, you can see everyone's just eyeing everyone up a little yeah. bit as we see another bowling change. And this is 
I'm, see, you know, you guys said that that was the banker, Pangero Pangeso. Yeah. For me, this is the man. <laughs> the four-day game, the 50-over campaign that everyone had. Junior Dala has been a performer of note. He's bowled well, he's taken wickets, and he's taken wickets of big players. Crucial times. He always, he's, he's always that guy that comes there when you need that wicket, and then he just fires and uh, I mean his experience also with 150 matches that he has played so there's an experienced uh, bowler out here and we know what he's going to bring pace it's going to bring pace he's going to bring a bit of intent a bit of intensity we see Bretzka again he's batting very deep in his crease so he's expecting the ball to be a bit back of a length ah, and oh. this time tries to force it doesn't get enough bat on it and that is the first wicket of the day Junior Della comes into the attack, as you said, when he comes in, he takes the wicket and he does exactly that on his first ball in the fifth over. And again, it's a big player. It's not just a wicket, it's Matthew Brietzka that needs to go back into the hut. For this time round, me being a, a big Brietzka fan, <laughs> I think it's actually good for the Warriors. He has looked out of sorts. Yeah. He did look like he was struggling a little bit. So this might just be a good thing for the Warriors. And also just to get momentum going because Pelé is going on nicely. Yeah. He was struggling a bit. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it's what we were speaking that it, it just looked like he was trying to force it a little bit, and unfortunately, uh, just uh, the bat turning in his hand, they're trying to force it a little bit, not even looking to see the first ball off or second or two balls off. But immediately, because of the pressure that has been created on him on the previous balls, he comes out, tries to swing, and unfortunately doesn't get it. And the new batter for the Titan uh, for the Warriors is that. Uh, Jordan Herman nearly said the Titans because they're a former Titans uh, player also. Um, so this is going to be a very good uh, betting partnership, I feel. Also, Jordan Herman has yes. been coming up the ranks yes. in the last season or two. Everybody has been going, Oh, now who's this guy uh, coming up into the ranks? And he's betted well. He comes, he's got a hundred in the SA20 also very uh, recently. So this is going to be a very good uh, partnership that we have here. And he also played in the SAA side as well. So he is someone to look out for. He is someone that's going to bring you something different. And now also there's two left-handers at the crease. Yeah. This is going to be very interesting now to see what the bowling plans would be. As immediately we see Big Bosch, who took the catch as well, going into that slip cordon <laughs> for the new batter. Oh, and just bounces short. First time trying to um, cut it through that point, but just bounces short there of Aaron Pangi. So almost another opportunity created. As you said, this is your man. This is your banker. And, you know, second ball already. Took a wicket in the first. Created another opportunity. Wonderful bowling here from uh, Junior Dalla. Yeah, Junior Dalla is uh, definitely the man that you can bank on for wickets. He's making withdrawals every time he takes, <laughs> takes the ball in hand. <laughs> In just a bit of a back of a lens pushes it into the cover the Jordan uh, Herman for a dot on this super sport pitch it's going to be very difficult to get those back of a length away but you need to find a way it's t yeah. 20 cricket you need to find a way to get those great deliveries away for at least a one and that's one thing that the uh, the Warriors has not done as of yet Pile is on 15 of 12 remember he scored their trifecta of boundaries yeah, 12 yeah. runs in three balls yeah. the rest has almost been all dots yeah Ah, oh, and now uh, gets a full one. Ah, oh, just get a top edge there over the keeper to the boundary for the first maximum of the day. He'll not be too happy about the shot, but the result is what counts at the end of the day. And he just got a six savvy. It's a half a dozen for Herman. Safest place to hit him. What are you talking about, KJ? Yeah. Safest place to hit Straight him. Straight on both sides of the wicket. <laughs> You can see he was completely rushed and Junior Dala doing a fantastic job. And uh, completely surprised him with that short one. They do have someone here down at fine leg. He's a very square fine leg. But oh, that one just flew off the bat. Just shows you the pace that he's generating. Is yeah. Junior Dala already in his first over. Ah, just gets the inside half of the bat. And they're looking to come back for two. And they do so comfortably. Wonderful running there from the Warriors to then that into two. You were speaking a bit earlier about uh, how the score has gone on. And, uh, you know, there's those three boundaries. There was a leg by, there's a six. 
and it's almost petty balls. So it just shows that there isn't a lot of singers that have been taken mm-hmm. here and uh, a lot of dot, too many dot balls and it's, a, it's either dot ball or a four dot ball and a four there isn't anything in between which is uh, uh, important to try and get early on yeah that would be a concern for the Warriors but that's the end of the fifth over we're going to have a commentary change as we have got the voice <laughs> the Marvin Gaye Express coming in it is Pendulo Makuman is going to join KG for the next five overs. <laughs> Pendulo having a bit of a spine with that introduction there from Gert. <laughs> How do you feel about that comparison? <laughs> oh man, oh, the best thing here is the cricket that we're watching. As you see Junior Dala just come in KG and blow them apart. Jivashan Pele is trying as much with his 15 runs. Jordan Herman is brand new, lucky to get away with that six. Yeah. So it's definitely something to smile about here if you're a cricket loving fan. Yeah, How can definitely. You not? definitely. And I, Lizard Williams going into his third over, which is something that we also don't see quite a lot. But then it's because you've got a somewhat like a Corbin Bosch who's a, a bit of a, a bows at the end mostly. Ah, uh, whoa! What did that come of? Oh, bye. That is gas. That is a lot of gas from there. <laughs> <laughs> that is. That are, and movement, because mm. that just didn't just go straight up. It actually moved quite a lot as we look at the replay. It was. Ah, oh, that's a. Are you sure there was no pattern there? <laughs> I you that there was actually a pattern to that. There was that so one. much movement on that. Henry Clausen is uh, one good wicket keeper, and even he got fooled. It's very difficult. After the bat, after the ball passes the bat, yeah. and then the ball starts moving, moving for the around. wicketkeeper. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Ah, and this time around just goes nice and straight, and Jivishan Pele just blocks it off. Good bowling, continuing here from uh, Lizard Williams. As I said, into his uh, third over, he's bowled very well so far. He's bowled 2.2 overs, has only considered five runs. The fours that have been going uh, today have been leg by and by. So no boundary actually has come of his bat so far. He's been brilliant. He's shown his class from the SA20 this season. Ah, and a wonderful shot over that cover. Jivishan Pele says, thank you very much for that word. Hits it over that cover. Goes to the boundary for the first boundary of the bat of uh, Lizard Williams. It's the bravery for me, KG, that gets me <laughs> going when I'm watching Jivishan Pele. Not afraid to take on the cover fielders. There's three of them stationed there, and the man who's standing at cover point, you can see, is the deepest man, yeah. and he's not brave to take him on. It's so difficult to drive the ball on the up. You was speaking about it earlier when you hit that back of a length, yeah. but it just speaks to the form of Javesh and Pele. Again, you speak of the form, you speak about also knowing the conditions. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he played for the Titans for a few games, and you know. Playing against your former team, you want to show that you know you lost a bit of a diamond here, and that's why Division Play is so positive in this game. And once again, he goes for that uh, expensive drive over cover, and it goes to the boundary once again, as he did in the other over where he hit boundaries. He goes boundaries in succession. And ah, very good ball from very good. Ah, and it's also a no ball here. That's the biggest thing now. <laughs> You're having a player who's on form, he's smashing your good deliveries away because there's nothing wrong with, with Lazard Williams' delivery, but he just overstepped on that mark. So now he has had two good deliveries smashed away for four. And now Javesh and Pillay has a free one yeah, to hit. Free one to so hit. the question is, where do you go now as Lazard Williams? I think it's the same thing that happens to the batters where the bowlers are creating pressure on them. The batters also create a pressure to the bowler who feels that I want to get something out there and then he ends up just overstepping on that. On that, uh, Let's see how Division goes for this uh, free hit. Ah, and he just misses out a bit of low full toes there. Gets a thick edge onto his body and uh, Lizard Williams will be happy with the result of that. Gorgeous delivery from, from Lizard Williams. Bowling it off the back of his hand very difficult skill to execute as a fast bowler to deceive a batter like that especially if you're playing as well as Javesh and Pele is completely missing a straight one that is the skill of Lazard Williams 
So now it's back to a legal delivery, one that can take him a wicket. Where does he bowl? But luckily enough, he has Herman who still just needs to find his feet. Yeah, yeah. And he just pitches one up and Herman just hits it to that uh, cover point area and uh, Rivaldo Monsami just brings it back to the keeper. Um, I don't know, that, that just looked like it was a short, it was a ball that was there to hit, especially in T20 cricket. Full, with a bit of width, outside the off stump, we will feel that Jordan Herman will feel that he missed out there, he had an opportunity to hit, uh, to put that away. But also at the same time, they had Coburn Bosch standing at second slip there for that particular delivery. So if the ball now had to be edged. Yeah. And this time around, just... Hits it down to that deep point and Deva Breves just comes to collect it for a single. That is what we call bowling to your field. Mm -hmm. Was with Petrota outside the off stump, but uh, because of someone out there. And that brings us to the end of the power play with the Warriors on 48 for 1. Division play currently on 24 for of 17 balls and Jordan Herman on 9 from 7 balls. Love the fact that Jordan Herman is not just going into his shell as he comes in here. He's also looking to score from these deliveries. He's just not finding the gaps as Javeshan Pele is. Of course, Javeshan Pele has been there for 17 deliveries. Aidan Markram bowled only a single over against the Warriors, getting the crucial wickets of Yanuman Malan. He comes in again into the attack. Lazard Williams has already bowled three. Aaron Pangi has got a good tapping in his first over. Junior Dala. He's got in his wicket in his first, but here's Aidan Markram now, very economical in his first over, going for two runs. What is he going to do now? I think he would be happy, obviously, bowling at two left-handers, turning the ball away from them. Markram just tucks him in a little bit, doesn't give room, and uh, Jordan Herman just manages to hit it out for a dot ball. I think uh, Aiden Makram will be licking his lips here that, you know, he's got two left-handers batting, one that's uh, uh, new to the wicket. And once again, it just pops it a bit straight and Jordan Herman just manages to hit it down to that um, long off for a single. Makram's control over the years has grown impressively well. Yeah. You'd watch him and think that he's a genuine out-and-out -out spin bowler. <laughs> Especially with the white ball, so good with it controlling an innings, drawing it back and because you'd think that, ah, it's Makram I can smash him away, in comes a wicket. Yeah. Once again, just outside that off stump and uh, Javishan Pillay manages to hit it to that cover for, a uh, deep cover for, oh, is there, ah, almost got another one there but um, Khalim or is it Williams was just mm -hmm. uh, alert at that time around. So the feeling that they've got at the moment, they've got a deep cover, got a long off, long on, cow corner and a deep score leg. And as we say that, the Warriors brings up their 50. Steady that they've only lost one wicket. Mm. They'll be very happy with the fact that they've gone through their work, finished the power play, only losing the wicket of Matthew Pritzker and as you and Herbs were talking about it, was really looking too comfortable, mm, mm, eating mm. up deliveries, and having him lost means that now you've opened up the game to a Jordan Harman who yeah. is looking to take it on. Ah, just outside that off stump that time around, uh, uh, Division Pele trying to cut it and just misses it. Good bowling from Markram here. Very good bowling. Mm -hmm. I think he would argue with you. He'd, he'd tell you that he's a genuine bowler, actually. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just straight on the pads and Division Pillay manages to get bad on it. And uh, fine leg just gets a bit of a hand to it, which allows Lizard Williams to pick it up and they come for back for his second. And after the seventh over, the Warriors are 53 for one. Valiant effort that from Tabre Shamsi. Not one known for <laughs> out of the world and flary fielding, <laughs> throwing himself around. But he's also another one of those players over the couple of seasons who's drastically improved that portion of his game oh, as well. Definitely. His fitness has come, gone, and now his fielding as well. We need not speak about his bowling. Currently the leading <laughs> wicket taker, taking three wickets in the first game, taking four in, in the previous game. Mm. Now here he comes to try and do something here for the Titans because they've only gotten one wicket and seven wickets, which is not good standing if you are the bowling team. 
Yeah, definitely. But I, I don't think, you know, the game has gotten away with the Warriors going at 7.6 to the over. Um, we were speaking a bit earlier with her that, you know, you need to get into that 180, 190 to be in a safe zone. Uh, so, but this is going to be a very important uh, phase of the game. Uh, I think in the next five overs or so, will maybe determine as to how far the Warriors can get into their innings. We've spoken about how um, Shamsi has taken wickets so far, and this time of the game, um, it's going to be a very important phase. And first up, just outside that off stump, and uh, Jordan Herman manages to get back on it down to that long off for a single. Suppress Shamsi has been brilliant in both his opening spell and his closing spells at the end of the innings. Against Paul in the previous game against the Rocks, we saw him take a wicket in his first over and then come back, take a wicket in his second over, <laughs> and then taking two final wickets right at the end of the innings. Yeah. It's just dangerous everywhere. At this time, a bit quicker, and uh, Jordan I mean, Division Pele. Just hits it down to that cover for another single. Um, I must say, this is you've spoken about how dangerous Shamsi is, and I think the the Warriors would say that this is the man that we don't want to give weakness to. And if they can rotate him around, they would feel that they're doing a good job. Because what you don't want to do is that just give wickets away cheaply. This time around, a bit quicker and flatter from uh, Shamsi. And once again, Jordan Herman just hits it down to that long off for a single. The thing that we've seen also here, just by watching Dala, that six, that was a top edge from Herman, is that the pace is true yeah. through, this, this, yeah. through, through, through yeah. the pitch. Once again, a quick one from uh, Tabras Shamsi and uh, Javishan Pile manages to hit it down to that long on for a single. He's been bowling very quick in this over, I must say. Um, he's just looking to basically stop the batters from trying to score any runs. Um, and, you know, they've gotten four singles so far from this over. Like you said earlier on, just picking away singles from the team's best bowler. Mm. Just like yeah. that, you placing it. Of the arm and then the oh! A bit of an opportunity, half chance there for a run out, but it wasn't to be. Don't taste it in my <laughs> He's another one who's just a world renowned fielder, a class catcher. Don't want to test him out on the field. There's a reason why he's standing in that cover region. The most attacking fielder stand there, but a brave single between Herman and Pele, bringing Pele back on strike now. Oh, this time around, just bit side, the outside half of the bed. Wonderful bowling, wonderful way to end the over there from Tabaraz Shamsi. And after eight overs, the Warriors are 58 for one. Wonderful way to end the over there from Shamsi. Ooh, the scoreboards say, don't let life throw you a curveball. <laughs> that was a curveball indeed. <laughs> that was one from that left arm of Tabaraz Shamsi. He did hold the top spot of T20 International number one bowler for quite a while. And showing why he still has that level of that stature to brace Chamsey. And in Makram to continue from the Henops River end. At the stab, Jordan Herman comes down, tries to charge him. Long off coming in, and it's a catch taken at long off. Very good uh, bowling from Aiden Makram. Jordan Herman came down the wicket, tried to hit it <laughs> over, didn't get enough bet on it, and that created an opportunity for the Titans. And they say thank you very much for that. Not an easy catch for Diane Khalim to take this. Flat lights, they are on now. The ball is wide. It's up in the air by Jordan Herman, who was also starting to feel the squeeze from the spin bowlers and the attack from the Titans. Wanting to take it on as much as he can. That was not there. Aiden Markram's control and accuracy. Full display again. Top edge. Never really got a hand into it, that KG. And Very similar dismissals. Because if I look at the way that uh, Matthew Brisky went out a bit earlier, also just got his hand off the bat a little bit. Same thing here with uh, Jordan Herman. You dare say that the ball just seems to get big on them. Mm. There's a little bit of extra bounce that we are seeing from the surface because the ball did hit the outer part of Matthew of, of rather Jordan Herman's bat. That's why we saw that being top edged. Same thing with Britska. But here's a man who might not even worry about how far you bounce the ball because <laughs> he's the tallest of the lot. Marco Janssen, 
bit of a change uh, change in betting. <laughs> uh, him coming at number four, it is not un- it, it is uh, not unusual to see him coming up at number four. Um, considering the way that he has batted, um, well, even when he played Test mm. cricket for the Proteus, he batted well. In the SA20 also he batted well. So it's not unusual to see him coming uh, into bat early on. Clearly the Warriors don't mind experimenting with the batting lineup as well. In the previous match, they saw Bayer Swanepoel coming in at number three to get the score going. Mm. Marco Janssen, known for his big hitting, he does have long levers, mm. deceptively strong, can clear a boundary very easily. And with the team batting at seven runs to the over, like you said, it's a crucial period in the game where economy becomes the name. And uh, this time around, just goes outside the off stump. As you were speaking about those long levers, he goes outside the off stump, reaches for it, hits it down to that fine leg for a boundary. Just a second ball and is managing to get a boundary out of it. In these moments when it's just about the economy, you bring someone to destabilize the status quo. And this is what Mark Janssen is about to do. He's shown us how he's about to do it. <laughs> and that goes again for the show, but this time around, wonderful fielding from Sibonele Makanya at uh, that uh, short fine leg. And they just come back for A2. I don't know, doesn't it make it a bit easier for him with Aiden Makram coming around the wicket? Doesn't it then open up that leg side a lot that he feels that he can actually hit that shot? 100%, but also at the same time, you look at the Titans having a deep square leg, a cow corner, and a the man at long on. Yeah. It's a tr- oh, this time around, tries to get a little bit cute and uh, just outside that leg stump and it's a white ball signal by the Empire. Just stand and deliver, Marku. Yeah. You don't have to be fancy. Just whoosh. Give us a golf swing. I always find that to be very intriguing when somebody with so much power that can hit and try to play those cute shots. <laughs> ah, there we go. As we were speaking about using those levers, hits it over that mid wicket for a huge boundary. That's what we were talking about. I don't understand why <laughs> you didn't do this in the first place. You have Spanelo Makanya at short 45. That paddle shot could risk a wicket. Just clear the thing. Look at how gorgeous that is. Just standing on it, goes down on one knee. The ball is high up. The camera can't even find it in the night sky. Ah, as you take a look at it again, wonderful shot there from Maku Janssen. I just, that's why we're saying that with the line that Aiden Makram is coming on, with the man that's got long levers, it makes it easier for him to just go that leg side is opened up and I'm sure he's been sent at number four to go out there and get the, the run rate up. Last ball in the ninth over. Gotcha, and that's gotcha. again, oh, this time around, just a bit of a half shot there, didn't go through fully for it and uh, hits it down to that deep square leg for a single to end the nine over. The Warriors are 72 for two with Division Pillay who opened the betting a little bit earlier on. 29 for 3 and Maku Janssen has come on, has put runs on the board. He is on 13 from just 5 balls. It is an inspired batting lineup change here from the Duffer Bed Warriors because you have a Javeshan Pele who's left handed. You've seen a string of left handers come in and then all of a sudden they change it up. They're like, no, let's throw in a right hander. Let it be a very tall right hander where your bowlers <laughs> now need to switch lengths mm, with mm, each bowler mm. that they're bowling on, switch lines as well. So it's a double switch for the bowlers that they need to turn into. And we've seen how difficult that was for Aidan Markram. How will Tabray Shamsi go with the Marco Janssen experiment? Ah, it just comes down, but... Uh Shamesy just sees him there, pushes it a bit wider, and then just blocks it down. Those leg levers coming to play, they help him just push it down to that uh, long off for a single. I think if it wasn't as tall as he is, he might have just walked past that one. But you saw, he was thinking about it. Yeah? He was thinking about it, he yeah. was charging down with purpose. It's just the skill of the brace Shamsy, like you said, noticing that and pushing it away. But Javishan Pele, he's also here, he's also on form. <laughs> Straighter there from Tabras Shamsi 
and uh, division play just manages to get it down to that long run. I must say, um, the last ball of the last over that uh, Tabrez Shamsi bowled, and the two balls, he's uh, bowled a bit slower than what he did in the first five balls that he bowled a bit earlier on. Must just say, maybe he was finding his length and yeah. his speed in yeah. the first over, yeah. where the pitch will react to him. But why that again? And uh, Maku Janssen would have felt that uh, that should have been a wide, but it was inside the line and wonderful bowling there from Tabrez Shamsi. Probably expecting him to come down the wicket again. But also you saw that one was a little bit quicker. Mm. Didn't turn that much. Ah, and Maku Janssen once again tries for that big shot. Just gets a bit of a bottom edge there down to that cow corner for a single. But the reason why I raise the amount of turn and speed is because you think about the previous over the ball that beat Javesh and Pele, the first delivery that Javesh and Pele faced, that previous ball from Marco Janssen where he slowed it down, you just see the ball bites a little bit more from the surface. Ah, wonderful ball in there from Tabres Shamsi. Again, when he, he balls it a bit slower, he looks a little bit more dangerous because mm -hmm. he brings that 10 into the into the game and it just makes the best man to, little, to be a little bit unsure mm -hmm. about how they want to approach. So wonderful ball there from uh, Tabraz Shamsi. And that one was a little bit straighter, <clears throat> didn't turn as much, almost chipping in the, between the gap. And that's ball of the over, division play, comes down the wicket, hits it down to that long off. At the halfway point, the Warriors are 76 for two. And we've got a change in commentary with Hurt Maloney. It's the Poloni with the M coming back into commentary. The introductions in the station just become better and better and better. I'm just glad we could replace KG because he normally makes spelling mistakes when he talks. <laughs> with an M. Well, there's no mistakes here. We are seeing halfway through the innings, only two wickets lost for the Duffer Bed Warriors. Very strong Javesh and Pillay, 31 from 26. Marco Janssen has just come and blew them away with his 15 from 8 deliveries. And as you come in, Maloney, they bring in the banker, Junior Dala, getting a wicket in his first delivery, only going for 8 runs. And it's only Aidan Markram who has another wicket. Yeah, Junior Dala is definitely the one that you, you bank on to pick up another wicket. And I said it earlier and I say it again, he always gets the big wickets. And with Marco Jansa coming in, the impetus is definitely there for run rate. They want to lift it up a little bit. I think they feel that he might be key. A big wicket, a wicket here or there will definitely make a difference. Junior Dala rushing Javesh and Pele. But you know, one thing that might come to the advantage now of Marco Jansen is the fact that the pitch is playing true in terms of mm -hmm. its bounce and pace. So he can use the speed of Dala against him to actually extract most of his levers. Yeah, 77 for loss of two, just the two wickets. The one thing that the Warriors have done well is they've kept wickets in hand. It's one thing if you go to look at that batting lineup still to come. They still got Tristan Stubbs to come, Tishile still to come. It is going to be a fantastic finish. Still have a Patrick Kruger too. Mm -hmm. Junior Dala, he bowls it beautifully. You you just see with every delivery, Marco Janssen is looking to go explosive, but he is able to react very well to what the bowlers are delivering to him. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier they're playing those little little shots just trying to ramp it a bit more than actually just blazing away like we know we can now to Dayan Khalim who's going to see him stretching here for a little bit he also has more slower balls more variations as in Arsenal he's not as quick as the man you're seeing charge down here yeah, ferocious bouncer just uh, behind the shoulder but harsh on Junior Dala there. He got a bowl at short to get it over Marco Janssen's <laughs> head, I promise you. He is a, a lanky gentleman. But the, the plan is there for him. He's a bit of a happy hooker. He loves slapping it over, over the uh, leg side. And uh, you can see him just charging and really digging it in. And oh, bit of an early call mm. there. Harsh, very tough call for, for the bowler. But in he comes again. Bowls it outside the off stump, Javish and Pele nearly finding himself halfway down the track. 
But you can see Dala really found his area of operation, hitting it hard on the back of a length, sometimes dabbles near the stumps, but we see where he's working. Yeah, and those uh, 10 runs conceded in this uh, second over, that was a big top edge. That was actually went for six earlier. We actually rushed Herman as well. Mm. So that is something to keep in mind that he hasn't really conceded the runs except that one. Oh, just using nifty hands there, Marco Janssen. Like we said, that pace against him. But luckily enough now, power play is finished. You can have five fielders patrolling the boundary, mm. just defend. If you're wondering why the boundary suddenly disappeared from Jevesh and Pele, who was striking it so beautifully, brave enough to attack the gaps over the infield. It's no longer there now. Uh, he's, been, uh, he's been the mainstay thus far, opening up the batting with Matthew Brietzka. His partnership has rocked onto 21. Mm -hmm. oh. Getting him on the head, it seems. Junior Dala really rushing the tougher bed warriors. They seem a little bit uncomfortable. Man who's faced 28 deliveries, still getting clubbed into the head. And because of that, you see the umpire calling for a medic to check it out. Yeah, it might be one of those uh, very awkward situations. He hasn't looked that comfortable against the shorter one. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's one of those very educated fingers coming out of the physio. Just making sure that the both eyes go in the same direction. <laughs> and uh, it's 80 for the loss of two Pendulo. It's been riveting stuff. But just feel that the Titans are now just basically starving them for runs. They are disappearing. And the thing is now, it's Javish and Pele. Javish and Pele is the Warriors leading run scorer. Mm -hmm. Top scored in their first game when they played against the Tuskers. And then against the Dolphins, he top scored again with 40 runs. And Jerry is again with 33 runs and undefeated. And now when you're starving a player like that of runs, Marco Janssen came in, bang, bang, bang. Junior Dala starving him of runs as well. All of a sudden, a couple of overs go by and then you think, holy smokes, we are in a little bit of a hole here. But when would you then launch? Because that becomes a problem with the uh, Warriors now. They got eight wickets in hand. They sent in Marco Janssen to do a bit of a job. And now he's being contained. He had those last, that lusty blow that went for a mammoth mm. six. But they kind of figured out a way to bowl at him now just to contain him a little bit. But now you look at it also now, Gert. The game is back. Marco Janssen is here. You still see Corbin Bosch about to come in. Mm -hmm. uh, Dayan Khalim is still to come. Shamsi has two overs. Dala smashes the top half of Marco Janssen's bat off the back of a length to reach that high with some serious gas and the pace that is coming at you. It ends over number 11. It's 80 for two. And those two dugouts sitting next to each other, you'll notice no eye contact. <laughs> Cricketers are normally the most friendly people you'll ever meet. But uh, when it's high stakes like this, I said it earlier as well, one of these two teams will taste defeat tonight. Both teams have played 2-1-2 two, two, and uh, the Warriors top of the lock. So the Titans will love to knock them off and the Warriors will want to win to stay there. That is exactly how it played out in the four-day series as well. Mm -hmm. The Warriors were at the top, the Titans came in, in this very ground, winning one of the most thrilling four-day oh. matches you'll see. And from there, the guard changed, the Titans reigned mm -hmm. at the top. But here's Shamsi now. Oh, it delivers a juicy full toss, and it gets what it deserves. Into the embankments, destruction from Chivesh and Pelé. It is another half a dozen for the Warriors and just what the doctor ordered, all of a sudden Pelé's strike rate looks a lot better and there was no zombies about that one, it was a massive hit. That is what you call a pie. What flavor it is? It's pie flavored. Gravy you can literally see dripping off. Oh there. my word, smashing shot from Jivesh and Pelé, he moves to 39 runs. Again he goes down, but this oh. time straight up, take cover into the stands, because that's where it lands. Six runs, back to back, from Chivesh and Pele. I almost thought that one's going to join us in the com <laughs> box, it looked like he hit it a bit sweeter. And it's another half a dozen, oh, a full dozen already coming in this last two balls, Pendulo. 
It just looks like they've decided now is the time. Now is the time to put some runs on the board. To praise who? <laughs> he dances to the tune of his bowling over the top down the track. Now he tries to sweep, but it's signaled wide as Tabriz Shamsi is searching for different ideas to contain this damage. Yeah, two sixes and a wide. So that means 13 runs already in two deliveries. Oh, Shamsi under all sorts of pressure. A year ago, the number one T20 bowler in the world. It's been put to the ground by Tabrez Shamsi. It does it look like a bump ball? We can't tell, but woof, that looked close. You can just see him shaking his hand. The ball came to him a little bit quicker than he actually anticipated. There it was, Gert. There it oh. was. He puts it down. Tabrez Shamsi. What an eventful over. Get good connection this time, Javeshan Pele consolidates his boundaries, consolidates the drop. Oh, heartbreak for Shamsi that. Heartbreak for Shamsi, heartbreak for the Titans and elation for the Warriors supporters. They would love to see Pele knock on and kick on to get a big score here. He's on 46. See that one just picked up on the toe end of the bat. That could have just changed the complexion completely. This partnership now with 36 runs. Marco Janssen It's pushed wide from Tabre Shamsi Markram dives Junior Dala is in the deep An arm you don't want to test So they settle for one Just the one that, that did not sound very good off the bat Right on the toe end Cued that one down To the fence to Junior Dala And it's going to be one of those evenings Where you just feel that oh, Things just needs to happen every over been an event. This one just clapped back. Right at the deep is Lazard Williams. Another arm you don't want to test. Seems like there's no arm that is not dangerous for the momentum multiply titans. But productive over as ever for the Duffabed Warriors. Taking a total of 16 runs from it. And 16 runs of the premier bowler for the momentum multiply titans must have a psychological knock on them as they move to 96 for two and also he hasn't picked up a wicket so so far shams is wicketless it was one of the guys they banked on to actually pick up wickets pick up early wickets as we see another man who's a very exciting play in t20 cricket corbin bosch coming into the attack a little bit surprised that he comes in a little bit late i would have thought shamsi might come in a little bit later on and they're really looking to go at him. But here's Corbin Bosch with more control and accuracy. Javeshan Pillay looking to swing hard, testing Aidan Markram. Adran Pangi is all backs. And it's only a single. No timing on that one. Easy to just drop and go for the single. And maybe just feels that uh, he's a bit more comfortable against the spin. Pillay. Just wants to get off strike, make sure that they keep rotating the right and left combination, especially with the new bowler in, don't want him to settle. Corvin Bosch also does have that back of a length, he does mm. have a very dangerous bumper. Ball's a heavy ball. So it's strong is Corbin Bosch. Getting it to seem back into Marco Janssen as well. Look at Marco just being closed down as he tries to extend himself. Oh, we haven't seen a lot of movement tonight with the uh, white ball here at Supersport Park. The Duffabed Warriors is 98 for the loss of two. Pile is on 48 of 34. Marco Janssen is on 18 of 14. Pile facing up to Corbin Bosch in with his third delivery for the evening. Javeshan Pile again looking to go hard at it. It stopped at the deep. They move to 99 runs. It's partnership now worth 41. You look at it, it's 41. It's good 41. Mm. But you think that it could have been far more worse if Junior Dala didn't come back into the attack. You think it could have been far worse if Shamsi didn't have the control that he had in his first two overs. Mm -hmm. 
So now this shows the value of just grinding it out as the batters as they start to excel. Oh, Bosch is bringing it back. He's bringing it back here. Yeah? Very good over so far. And a very big swing there by Marco Janssen. He wanted to put that one into that grass embankment again. He's only and having some fielding practice with the crowd there. <laughs> he's already done that once. And it's 20,000 rands if you catch, if you get a catch. So here comes Corbin Bosch. He's only given away three runs in this over. And he might give just a little bit more. A very risky shot from Marco Janssen. Aiden Markram was running with all that he had. You can see the fans appreciating his efforts. Alas, it goes for four. That's how the Dufferbed Warriors bring up their triple figures. Yes, and it's 103 for the Warriors. You can see Markram chasing that one, but oh, in vain. He ran. It's almost like the ball just kicked off the surface there. You see the Warriors supporters just urging the white ball on and the <laughs> Titans trying to push it away from the fence. Aiden just a bit late there on the dive. Last ball. Good bumper. You spoke about Corbin Bosch's bumper in full display. After a crazy good shot from Marco Janssen getting inside the line of a ball seeming back into him to find the energy, to find the space and the timing to pop it over Markram who's a dangerous field and go for four just shows absolute class. It ends is over though. So you just have a look at that bumper again and as I said earlier Janssen being a very happy hooker he doesn't mind going for it. He will swing hard, he will go handsome and you got to feel with those levers even at top edge will get us here in the com box with the pace and the track and you know we're not saying this out of the blue we've seen it happen already <laughs> we've seen it Jordan Harman hit the ball with a top edge right over the side screen of the Henoks River of the West Lane end but now Diane Khalim one of the two all-rounders between him and Corbin Bosch who look to steady the innings and just draw the economy back we've seen that with Corbin Bosch and now there's Diane Khalim 13 overs gone you almost feel that they got to double up from here with the start they've had with eight wickets still in hand and they try to do so however there is protection up in the deep it's just a single but with that single Javeshan Pele brings up an extraordinarily well played half century 50 from just 36 deliveries he's really got to be proud of that yeah, and he's been part of every single partnership thus far. He opened the batting up with Brietzka, who looked out of sorts tonight. Mm. And then with Herman as well. And this now being a fantastic partnership with Marku Janssen of uh, 46 thus far. Great innings. And he has been the leading run scorer for the Dufferbid Warriors as well. It's been a long time coming for Javesh and Pelé, scoring 29, leading the scoring for the Warriors, scoring 40, leading there in the second game. Here he is with his half century. Diane Khalim looks to take either one of these players out, mm. keeping the run rate steady between 7.9 and 8 runs to the over. So around 8 runs to the over, you'd respect that. Now the partnership is 47. Yeah, Khalim will definitely take off the pace a lot. He'll bowl a lot of cutters. But on this super sport track, what we've seen tonight, the length is going to be important mm. that they bowl at. They can't just try and put the ball there. They've got to hit it dig hard. Just like that. Because you might get a top edge. And it runs to Aiden Markram. He's one of the best. And he shows why. The ball running away in front of him. He chases it down. Cups it like a legend. And that is the end of Javesh and Pele. And it is Aiden Markram. Skipper of the Titans picking it up. Only going to see him in a couple of games more maybe before he leaves for the IPL. Big loss and it's going to be a fantastic comeback. If the Titans can pull it back from here, they were looking at 200 on the board easy. With that wicket of Pelé, new bat at crease. Marco Janssen struggling a little bit with timing as well. That could just bring open up that back door for uh, the Titans. And man, the man coming in now is quite a player to let in through the back door. Scoring 302 in his four-day match against the Tuskers. 
He hasn't fired as much in this T20 competition just as yet. He didn't lose his wicket though against the Tuskers, which is very important. Takes that form. In comes the one and only Megali precociously and all the other adjectives you can find which just mean amazing. Tristan Stubbs. Yeah, the future. The two futures of South African cricket there. This one you can see him just hitting the deck, getting the length just on that five mm. meter and just trying to force it again like we've seen two others do as well in Bretzka and Herman just forcing it and getting that top edge and a fantastic catch because that almost looked like it was going over him but he kept his cool, kept his nerve and just kept backtracking and cupped it like a legend as you alluded to. Phenomenal catch that from Aidan Markram and like you said the moment where Dayan Khalim came in to start is over the important thing here is not your pace it's not this or that it's your length and as you just spoke about that he hit the perfect length the same length that Junior Dala hits to remove Brietzka same fashion with Javesh and Pele and starts in the same fashion with Tristan Stubbs the outfield is pretty quick it gets to the man very quickly in the deep so they only take a single yeah, Tristan Stubbs, of course, the uh, man in the four-day game who scored a triple century, a 303 not out. So he comes off personal highs. Mm -hmm. Hasn't fired in the T20 as of yet. You've got to feel it's only a matter of time. And for the Titans as well, a, a guy like Brevis also hasn't fired yet. But Khalim picked up his first wicket, second ball of his spell. Oh. Super delivery, that. Just pure seam bowling this from Diane Kalim he's not searching for anything he's not doing anything out of the blue it's not like we've seen a slow ball a cutter just hitting the deck hard very hard bending that back and the pitch is rewarding him yeah and it's it's almost like Janssen's just looking where he's gonna hit it instead of looking at the ball you can see his head just lifting up in the shots the whole time mm. maybe just keep the head down a little bit more Oh, he's really getting some problems now is Marco Janssen. Mm -hmm. His scoring is a little bit stifled. He's only scored eight runs in the past 12 deliveries. That's going to start weighing on you, especially if you brought in as a pinch hitter. Those are the times where you say, I don't even worry if it takes the edge. But you just get a little bit so cold that you even miss the ball completely. And also puts the new batter coming in Tristan Stubbs mm -hmm. under a lot of pressure because he feels that he's got a fire from the get-go now because he doesn't have a partner on the other end that's firing on all cylinders so that's the end of the 14th over already six more to go Pendulo oh, score predictions where are we going to we're looking at 200 at one stage KG mentioned 160 is par but we felt 180 was what they needed but where are they going to at the rate that they're going, the mathematics says 160. Surely that's not enough on a, on a deck that's playing the way this one is. You just want a little bit more. But here's Junior Dala, who shows the beauty of the surface. Hitting the deck hard, attacking the stumps this time. Tristan Stubbs, not searching. But I like the fact that he's not just defending and looking to survive. He's a little bit proactive. Two singles in two deliveries. Marco Janssen, maybe he can take a page from that. Just allow himself to get back into rhythm, feel bat on ball, mm. rotate the strike and then eventually get going in the last four overs of the match. Well, they still got seven wickets in hand. Mm. I wouldn't wait till the last four. I actually would kind of get going in the next over or two. He tries to get going now. The timing is a bit off. Exemplary bowling from Junior Dala. Surely, as Marco Janssen is batting himself, he's taking lessons on where the areas of execution should be. I mean, you still got the likes of Bayer Swanepoel coming in, Kriselle coming in, you've got uh, Patrick Kruger coming in as well. Um, they all can hit a very long ball. So still a lot of hitting power to come in. Guys that can bat as well. Mokokane can hit a couple. So maybe just time to get r rotating again just get everything sorted again make sure that those singles become a permanent fixture in this partnership and don't get bogged down on one end problem is now junior dala and sabre shamsi are quite excellent at the back end of the innings mm. especially in this tournament they've taken their fair share of wickets 
to Brayshams. It was destructive in the previous match, taking those four wickets. The last two coming in the 19th over. Junior Dalla might get another one. Third man is coming under it, and he dives with no reward. Lazard Williams tried his best, running as hard as he can, but just couldn't reach it. It was almost like he was caught on the caught on the back foot a little bit. Misread that completely. Thought that ball was going a lot further than it was. Stayed on the fence and then decided to come in and oh, just could not get there. A big let off for the Warriors, just what they were calling for, and uh, would have may, might not would have been a bad thing. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Dalla so dangerous, paces so much, so much so that Tabrez Shamsi stood no chance. He is very fine in that deep fine leg position, but even he couldn't stop that little pedal. A much needed boundary for the Duffer Bed Warriors here. Lovely wrist there by Tristan Stubbs, just working it around the corner. And you'll see on the replay here just how quickly that ball flew off the bat. And that is what you were saying about this outfield and this pitch. It's playing beautifully. It's a quick outfield. It's a T20 pitch. So what would be a defendable score? The questions keep on coming. It's great lens from Junior Dalla. The lens are just amazing. Whoever's watching and is inspired, wanting to be a white ball bowler, this is how you do it. You take lessons from Junior Dalla, not how he's bowling, but the areas that he's executing. Spectacular bowling. It's giving away so little, but it's taking away so much from the Warriors. But as we speak on the amazing work of Junior Dalla, we bring back the amazing work and knowledge of Kahisho, who's going to be joining Gabs Maloney for the final five overs. Maybe I'm the old man as I stand from these seats. Yeah, I was a bit worried when I got here tonight. I thought I'm going to be the senior citizen in this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this trifecta, but definitely not. This threesome has turned out better. <laughs> KG, welcome. 115 on the board for loss of three wickets. You were talking about 160 being par. They need at least, I would agree with you, a 180. Yeah. How are they going to go about their work from here? Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> Corbin Bosch coming into the attack. Just the one for Stubbs, who's been rotating it nicely. I think as for how they will go about this, they've got wickets in hand. They've got Koshile still to come in, Patrick Kuga to still to come in, uh, and also Bayes on the can hit the ball. So one of these batters has to go out there and say, you know what, I'm going to do that. They have been trying, because Maku Jansen a few times has uh, swung the bat a little bit, almost got caught up in that previous over. So I think it's just one of those, they've got no choice, but one of them seriously needs to go. Stubbs is new to the crease, so he might need a bit of time, but uh, Maku Jansen has to go. As we see there going again, but falling short, two bounces, almost three to Junior Dalla is on that uh, deep extra cover fence. And yeah. they've bowled brilliantly to Marco Jansen. No, definitely they have. I think the, the first few balls he got a better way, but from there on they've really kept him contained. They'll be very happy with the way that mm. they've gone about him. And what that does is that the man that has come in to try and score as quickly as possible is not being backed down. It, 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 it puts pressure on you uh, as the partner on the other side to say, hang on, what game do I play now? See Tristan Stubbs just taking him back into the deck. Quick single and oh, fantastic backup work done there in the end. It looks like Aaron Pangiso did the uh, backup work there for the big arm of uh, Lazard Williams who came in all guns firing. And you can see Tristan Stubbs' mindset is just almost up and run. He wants to get a run a ball. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, obviously, because of the way that the game is going, there isn't a lot of boundaries that have been given to them. Mm. So the next best thing is to try to make sure that you get bat and ball for every ball that's coming to you and you try to get something of it. So we see Bosch into Janssen. Oh, this time just a check shot. Again, not carrying as Lazard Williams is on the fence there. Now the two bounces and I again emphasize how well they've bowled yeah, to definitely. Marco Janssen. They've kept him bopped down and the length has been immaculate, giving him nothing that he can just throw those big levers at. 
it must be very tough uh, right now for the Warriors since to how do they now approach the game going forward. Uh, but I think, like I say, it's it's one of those games that you really need to go for it if you want to give yourself a chance at Super Sport Park, chasing. I mean, uh, defending a total later on. Oh, this one just sounded Ooh. spectacular, and what a shot that was! Lazard Williams is on mid on on the fence. He had about 10 meters to go and he had <laughs> no chance. That was a brilliant shot. Oh. Lazard Williams is not slow in the field either, is he? But uh, to hit it like that and for a man to just stand and watch it, brilliant shot there from Tristan Stubbs, breaking oh. the shackles, a much needed boundary from the Warriors. That was goosebump stuff. Lazard Williams had no chance and what timing that was. Stubbs on the rampage. Doing a bit of a ramp and another four is going to go the way of Tristan Stubbs. He is making life very difficult for Corbin Bosch at the moment. Yeah, he took it both sides of the wicket, isn't he? The yeah. One to long on and the next one to fine leg. So he's actually hitting it in the same area, just in, in different phases. So a good end to the over there from Tristan Stubbs. Ending it with two much needed boundaries by the Warriors. Fantastic over, exactly what they needed. That run rate has now gone up to 7.9 as we see the crowd just having an absolute ball here at Supersport Park. It is a fantastic atmosphere. We thank everyone that's come out to support the cricket. It's going to be an exhilarating game. Star-studded teams on the park. Mm. As we see, 127 for the loss of three wickets. Marco Janssen is on 27. We see the Proteas captain, the Aiden Markram, having a chat to Khalim, saying you bowled well in the first over, but now we need to contain a little bit more. Now we need to step up. There is only a few overs left. And... Uh, Oh, they got to go hard here. Especially, I feel, Marco Janssen. He's being bogged down a little bit. He, he's not striking the ball the way he should. Run rate's at 7.9. They want to get it around about to the 8.5 and, and even 9 from here. Yeah, definitely. They need to get more than that. You would even say that they need to get as close to 10 as possible um, to finish off. Oh, Marco Janssen going for one. Oh, and that would have been one of the catches of the season. Instead, he has just popped it over the fence for a six. And it's a front foot no ball as well. It is a absolute cracking of shot. It was a fantastic effort. And the worst part is, if he took that, it, it wasn't front foot no ball. <laughs> I must say, it, it oh. must be very tough also for a bowler to bowl one over from one end go for three runs and also take a, a wicket and then you have to come and bow back and ball from the other side must be very tough for him to feel that hey one i've oh. done well from the other side why am i coming from this side free hit marco jansen leaning into that one this time he is caught on the fence but it's a free hit you cannot beat to even out but of a crowd Crusher catch there. <laughs> as we see the how train coming past and brought no luck to the titans <laughs> Well, I think you would say that the Titans bred no luck to themselves because they created a catching opportunity, but unfortunately it was a free hit mm -hmm. and it just didn't count for them. Bosch had a fantastic effort the previous one. This time the ball stuck and the free just went for the one. Kalim into Stubbs and Stubbs just dropping it onto that vacant mid-wicket. But a very quick junior Dala gets to the ball, just containing them to the one. And I think Marco Janssen will pull the trigger. I think he's going to go another big one. He's been eyeing up that mid-on region. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Like we said that he's in a phase now whereby there's no other way to mm -hmm. approach the game. He seriously needs to go from knowing that um, he's got other batters that are coming behind that can also bet. So it really wouldn't be a bad idea for him to keep on going. And uh, look, you test your luck out. He did that, got a six, and then he got a free hit. So you test your luck out. He needs to go out there and uh, get as many runs as possible. Oh, this one just works around the corner. Lovely wrist work by the big man. It is a four pass that 45 Shamsi there. We just let that one slip past him. Uh, again, uh, it's one of those. He is going for it. And at that time around, while going for it, just got a bit of an inside edge. And it went down to that fine leg for a uh, good result from him. Yeah, he wanted to play that one just around the corner. And uh, got enough bats on it to beat that man at 45. They've got the man on deep square, deep mid-wicket. And also, 
deep mid on or mid off um, yeah it is mid on right beg your pardon <laughs> it is the excitement that's getting to us we're trying to see everyone who's got the third man on the fence as well and a deep point for Janssen but I don't think Janssen is going to go for fours here that one just did not sound good off the bat at all. <laughs> just shows you that his timing has not been there tonight. He's been forcing a little bit. That ball should have gone. It was a length ball with the um, the reach that Marco Janssen has. Yeah. Could have gotten underneath it, but just another single. And I must say, if I'm a better looking at myself going that, uh, I haven't really been timing the ball the way that I, I have, I, I, I want to, but I'm on 39 of 28 balls. If I start timing it, I might get big runs here. So it's not a bad result not to be um, timing that ball well, but to going at a decent strike rate as Marco Janssen is uh, currently going. Giving himself some room is Justin Stubbs. Very well bowled by Khalim. And this time they go back for the second. Is oh. it going to be a run out chance? He missed the ball that Khalim. How close would that have been? That was a suicide second. Especially taking on Junior Dala coming in from the fence. One of the quickest and fittest men on the park. And a and strong arm. Fantastic <laughs> arm. This would have been very close. Very well bowled by Khalim following Justin Stubbs. But the way these two were running, there was just the call for two was there. And oh, all Halim had to do is just take off the wickets and so close. But survival again. Justin Stubbs facing up to Diane Halim. Again, giving himself some room, trying to get inside the line of the ball. And a fantastic delivery again. Just making sure that it's the one and it's the end of the over. It is 16 gone and oh 17 gone rather and fantastic partnership thus far 39 kg 144 for three oh that three 180 go, that 180 <laughs> so basically means that the warriors will need to be going at mm, about 12 and over yeah i would say they need to get this 12 and over and uh, that then would get them to that 180 mark so it's going to be an intriguing three overs that we have coming up. Seven wickets in hand, so you've got the wickets in hand. You've got two guys that have faced enough balls to be set, especially in T20 cricket. And uh, as we go through that, uh, the, 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 the bowling uh, with Aiden Makram has bowled three overs, one for 21. Lizard Williams, three overs, not for 16. Aaron Pangi, so just bowled that one over, going for 14 runs. Junior Dalla, three overs, one for 21. Tabraz Shamsi, three overs, not for 25. Coben Bosch, two overs, not for 19. And Dian Khalim, um, just bowling that two overs, one for 20 runs. Who do you go to now? Well, they've gone to Junior Dalla, <laughs> which is a fantastic choice. This will be his last over for the evening. Will Junior Dalla? They would want him to at least get a breakthrough, want to break this partnership because these two keep going. It's going to be danger signs for the Titans. Ooh. Oh, and he's hit another batter. It is, he's just had bullseyes all over. <laughs> Leg by is given down to third man and uh, just a mandatory concussion test. I wonder why they run out of the bag. <laughs> How many fingers are in those bags? I wonder what's in there. <laughs> That's maybe the first important question. What's in the bag? <laughs> and it's one of those things where everyone asks, but why? We don't know the questions yet. We'll try and find out. Yeah. But it's just to make sure that the helmet isn't cracked because it might be dangerous for the next time yeah, he yeah. gets hit. Make sure everything is fine. He knows where he is, that he is in Centurion at Supersport Park. He doesn't think he's in Oatswaring or something. <laughs> Oh, he's getting married to someone somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So 145 for the loss of three. Busy with the 18th over. One ball in. The run rate has gone up to 8.4. We were talking about getting it up to 12 for the next three to get to that magical 180, mm. which is where you want to be. Although 160 has been past score here, but history is not with you there because yeah. 22 of the last previous games played here, which is more than double, has been won by the team chasing so it shows you 160 batting first is not, not the score it's not the score definitely not and uh, as we've said uh, throughout uh, commentaries that how true the wicket has been so it doesn't look like there's any demons uh, in the pitch here it was just a bit mistiming here but because of the choice of uh, short selections uh, from the batters 
No Whoa. mistiming on that one. It is going to be another oh. one with dozen. And 20,000 Rand has just gone down. <laughs> Young man doing a valiant effort there. <laughs> another sixer. Half a dozen. Wonderful shot there from Marku Janssen to get it over for a six. As we've been saying that he hasn't been timing the ball well. Imagine what would happen and the strike rate that you can actually finish off here if he starts timing the ball well and hitting it and he just showed us that time around. Timing the ball over that cow, uh, cow corner for a wonderful maximum. 150 coming up for the Warriors. Uh, this time around timing it from the edge. All the way down to third man. That ball flew down there. Junior Dollar just taking off the pace a little bit. Having Janssen just flow, throwing the bat at everything now. And I think he should. 46 of 30. Yeah, Team is 152 for the loss of only three wickets. A lot of batting to come. I mean, if I'm Marco Janssen, I'm thinking that I'm a bowler that's probably going to bowl four overs out there. So I want to score the runs mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, I've got enough runs to defend <laughs> also later on. So hey, he's doing the job for himself here yeah, for a bit later on. Getting way outside the off stump is Tristan Stubbs. Just that little shimmy. Plays the one. And this is something that he's done brilliantly ever since, from the very first ball that he faced. He's gotten the signals going. Yeah, which is something I think was missing earlier on in the innings when we were speaking about how uh, it's a bit of a dot ball or try to go for a four. But uh, Tristan Stubbs going at a strike rate of uh, almost 200, going at about 185. But he's still being able to just get those singers, make sure that he's rotating the strike when it's not there for the boundary. Big shot coming. you got to feel it. And he goes for it. Another shot in the Ooh. gap. One bounce for take cover security. That was an absolute rocket. And it is 50 up for Marku Janssen. Came off 31 deliveries. Hard work is 30, 20, 50. Fantastic batting. Fantastic batting here from Marku Janssen. As we said and we spoke about a bit earlier that uh, he struggled a little bit with timing and he bat. The most important thing is that he has stayed out there. He has batted deep. He's taking the game deep. Uh, the, the game deep. And what is happening now is that to the banker who is uh, Junior Dalla, he's hitting for a 6 and a 4 in his last over. And also the 50 partnership coming up between these two. Oh, going straight up this time round. A fantastic shot. Glorious. The Zod Williams showing his six. That was absolute finesse by the big man. Straight over the bowler's head. Lovely shot. Do we still need a question of uh, where's that all rounder for the pro we, is, is that still a question with the way that um, Maku Janssen has been batting? Coming up at number four, change of batting. How much does it take for a batter? to try and hit Junior Dalla back over his head for a six. He did that right there. Got wonderful connection. Hits a six. Fantastic hitting by Marku Janssen. We know how destructive he can be and he's just messed up Junior Dalla's figures. He's done for the evening. Four overs bowled. 39 runs. One wicket that he's picked up with bowler wide. And then also we saw the third six of those four overs. Marco Janssen doing a fantastic job. As you mentioned, coming in at number four, which was a bit of a surprise. And the gamble pays off. And anyone watching, aspiring cricketers, this is how you take your opportunities. No, definitely. I mean, like I said, as, as a bowler also, knowing how when he's out there, he can see how good it is for betting. And knowing that later on, he's going to need to come in and bowl. And now he needs to get the runs. And as we say that, Lizard Williams comes back into the attack from the Hennops end. 190 what? now. Um, oh. A bit of a tuck. 27 runs away from it. 12 balls with the way that uh, the momentum has certainly shift towards, uh, shifted towards the Warriors. And we see that extras column after the 18 overs is 15 extras conceded by the Titans. With a couple of buys, two no balls and those four wides. A lot of extras in a T20 match. Yeah, especially if your no-ball also cost you six runs. Mm -hmm. That's true, that's true. Bit of a mid-wicket conference there. 163 for the loss of three wickets after 18 overs. 12 balls to go. They're basically now on the par score mm -hmm. for the first innings. Mm -hmm. But as we mentioned, team batting second. As one 
double the amount of games in a team betting first. Oh! oh. That was a very innovative shot. And it looks like uh, no ball has been called for height. That ball just slipping out of the hand. And just as Stubbs nearly made something of that. But this means another free hit. Klaassen does not look amused. How interesting has the game of cricket changed in the last couple of years? Lizard Williams has got the, um, the, 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 the power to ball at 145. But Tristan Stubbs felt like he can reverse lap him. How much has the game changed? How brave has the batters become? <laughs> oh, fantastic comeback by Lazard Williams. That no ball only costing him the solitary single for the no ball. Yeah, I think that was what comeback. I think that was what he was looking for in the previous ball. And at that time around, it was obviously a, a full toss. So it was a good comeback there from Lizard Williams. He's bowled very well. Mm. 3.1 overs that he has bowled has only went for 17 runs. Yeah, it's uh, this partnership that's been the problem for the Titans. Yeah. 59. Tristan Stubbs, 23 of his only 16. 56 of 32 for Marco Janssen. Stubbs facing up to Lazard Williams. Oh, going for the big shot. And with third man in the circle, big thick edge. And that's a bit of luck for the Warriors. It's four time. You know what they say, you make your luck. So Tristan Stubbs is looking to hit the ball. And because he's got full commitment towards hitting the ball, gets a thick edge, doesn't give them a uh, uh, short third man a chance, goes down to the boundary for your four. He's such, got such quick hands, does Stubbs, that when he gets that edge, it flies away. And there was nothing held back on that shot. No, definitely. He's throwing the kitchen sink to it. Might be even a couple of blueprints of that house as well. <laughs> Five runs in two balls already. Oh, we can make it up. And a wicket on a low full toss taken by Aiden Markram taking his second catch. Stubbs cannot believe it. Yeah. The probably the worst ball to get out to this <laughs> time of the innings. How often does that happen in oh. cricket eh, where your, your best ball is not necessarily the one that gets a wicket? <laughs> This time around, oh. just gets a low full toss and hits it straight to Aiden Makram at four. Which I think is also brave to have your mid on or mid off in the in the circle. Considering that at this time of the game, you are looking to obviously ball those yokers. If you miss it, it's a bit of a full ball. So you think that you'd want protection at the boundary, but the man is up there and it is paid off because that has gotten a wicket for the Titans. They've just noticed that Tristan Stubbs keep moving outside that leg stump the whole time he did against Junior Dale. He did it one or twice here. So they might have feel that he's not trying to look inside out. He's trying to open up that leg side maybe. So they keep following him. And that might be the reason why Markram was up. And as you mentioned, how brave that was. Patrick Kruger coming to the crease. He's got, a, he's got an average of 24. But more importantly, he's got a fantastic strike rate. He can really hit a long ball. He is a strong man. 186 for loss of four. There's another nine ball deliveries to come in this Warriors innings. Yeah, I would still think uh, try to get 22 runs of the last nine balls. It's not going to be easy with the way that Lizette Williams has been bowling mm. throughout uh, the innings. I mean, the last four that was hit was actually a thick outside edge from him. So I think, uh, you know, Lizette Williams will be looking to close it off, trying to see if they can keep the Warriors under that. Uh, 180 try to get them under 180 um, and I think they will be happy if they can get them under 180 uh, at the end of this uh, innings. Well the way that this track is played and the way the outfield is so lightning, oh 180 I think would be the target for both. Oh going outside that old stump, he set off like a Hey, but oh, again, Junior Dala. <laughs> Junior Dala is not Throws the arm. Throws as fast as it bows. <laughs> There's not the arm you want to take on. And well done to Patrick Kruger getting off the mark and getting uh, Marco Janssen back on strike. Would you harbor the strike now? Two deliveries to go in this over, then the final over. No. Would you harbor the strike? No, I would, I would just think at this point in time, you've got eight balls to go. Petru Kuga is out there. He can also hit the ball. Marco Janssen, he can hit the ball. They still have Bayer Sonopoulou, better three in the last game. We know that he can hit the ball. So I think it's one of those that every ball now, we have to be looking for a boundary. Yeah, Coach Peterson is not scared to make a couple of changes, give opportunities. Yeah. 
And this one has paid off for him, sending Marco Janssen in at number four. A big change in the field. As we see the uh, 45 coming across, he now has for Marco Janssen, he's got a 6-5-4 field. 6-3 field. Oh, 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 clever bowling. Clever bowling with that 6-3 field. He's just made sure that Marco Janssen cannot pierce that offside gap. I think it shows the, 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 the kind of confidence that Lizard Williams comes in. Mm -hmm. Marco Janssen is on 56. You've got a 6-3 offside field in a T20 game with the penultimate over of, of, of the innings. With wow. two third mans on the ring, or a slip that's moved down to, third, to the ring. Oh, fantastic bowling, Lizard Williams. <laughs> Not the easiest field to bowl to. They've got a deep point. But and he uh, bowled to the. That's what he wanted, and he executed quite correctly out there. But I think it's because uh, Maku Janssen has become a little bit predictable in this over. Always doing the same thing, going outside, trying to hit it over that cover, and they said, "Okay, if you're gonna do that, we're gonna pack up our offside field and just ball the ball out there. If you hit it, or if you get to it, good luck." Corbin Bosch coming into the attack. We saw the dugouts there. It is uh, 180. It's one of those scores where both teams will be happy. Yeah, yeah. The Warriors will be happy to get to that 180. They need another 11 to get there, though. Yeah. And the Titans will be happy to restrict them to the 180 because it looked at one stage when Pillay and Janssen was going mm. that it might get over that 200 mark. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, we were speaking about the pass score and saying that it's not enough. I think 20 runs over the pass score from the from the Warriors, they would feel that yeah, we've done a good job, we've went over the pass score, but the Titans would also feel that the Warriors haven't gotten away as much as uh, at one point, like you said, it looked like they were going to get it to 200, but it's not to be. Bosch into Kruger, gets outside that off stump. Oh, fantastic fielding by both men <laughs> not often you see dives on both ends double relay there well done to Aiden Markram and then Brevis also following up making sure the ball does not trickle into the fence it's two runs to the Warriors but fantastic fielding proper athletes there athleticism it's almost hot potato there I don't want it you don't want it let me throw it fantastic fielding Oh, what a shot that is! Fantastic flick by the wrist, Patrick Kruger! Shot! Half a dozen for the Warriors! Gert, it's, it's just amazing looking at the way cricket is at the moment. The way that Patrick Kruger plays that, it almost looked like a conventional cover drive because it just looks so natural to these players these days. I mean, Coben Bosch is not the slowest of bowlers, but Petru Kuga just says, you know what, I'm just going to do what I want to do and hit it as if like it's just hitting the ball through the covers. Oh, looks like a net session at the moment. <laughs> oh, this time fantastic bowling. This will be just the one. Oh, a minimum misfield and it will double up on the scores after saving a couple of runs in the two, two deliveries ago. Markram, of all people, has let that one just slip. Scores now 179. There are still three balls to go. Oh, now we are. This, <laughs> this has been a long 20 overs. Yeah, it has been. Every, it's been a long, entertaining 20 oh. overs. That 190 is still up. Oh, fetching Ooh. it. Fantastic shot. Kruger is on absolute fire. Gave himself room. Went outside, went back uh, to that leg stump, and great bowling by Bosch. But those wrists, the timing, fantastic. That's that it. I think it, that's the important aspect of the game. Get bad to the ball. And that's exactly what Petri Kuga did that time around. Although he moved away, but he tried to get bad on the ball. He got bad in the ball, hit it through that point, and it's a boundary. <laughs> we wonder every now and again how these players get the ball to areas that they do why a deep point has become almost a stock set <laughs> yeah. in the field now they're just trying to contain 
It's 183. You mentioned that 190 on the board. Yep. One lush blow could get them to that 190. Bosh into Kruger. He swings Ooh. hard. It's a big, lovely slap down the ground. This time, Brevis cuts it off. Marku Janssen doing a fantastic job. Immediately going back for that second. Doubling up once again. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic day from uh, first boss to try and change it up. Was so that uh, Petru Kruger is probably a little bit more um, comfortable whenever the ball is nice and full. Went to a short one. Petru Kruger got some bet in it, and Wanda Phil filled in from uh, Deva Previs to cut it down to just two rounds. Fantastic betting, Kruger. Fifteen love on that shot. <laughs> Last ball of the innings. Where is it going? Yes, it's going to be. Is it going to be a catch? Brian is getting on right and oh fantastic stuff. Bosch getting the final word in this Warriors innings. And Patrick Kruger succumbing. 17 of just a hand a dozen deliveries. Of six deliveries rather. Fantastic batting. Marco Janssen not out. 56 of 34. And it's 185 for the loss of five. You got five more than you wanted there, Skating. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the Warriors will be very happy with the way that they ended it off. Uh, Titans will probably be, feel a little bit more disappointed in the last few overs because uh, in the middle part of the game, it looked like the Warriors were taking in it and then the Titans just wrestled it back to them. But in the last uh, few overs, they've just let it slip away a little bit and now they've got 185 to chase. And how many times have we seen a little cameo like that, 17 runs, taking the game away from oppositions in the past? Yeah. That could be what changes the complexion of that game. It just came off six deliveries, so one over, 17 runs. It could just be that Petri Kruger has swung the momentum the into Warriors. the Duffelbed Warriors side. No, definitely. I think they'll be very happy and feeling pleased with uh, that batting innings. And uh, but they still got 185 to chase. As much as it's a lot of score, still don't think that it's going to be an easy target to try and, and, and restrict. And it's going to be very interesting to see how the Titans are going to go about chasing uh, this score where it's over par, but it's also not out of hand. They've got a fantastic, obviously, betting lineup, as we spoke about earlier. They've got the men that can do it. I mean, who better than Klassen at the moment, who was the better of the tournament uh, right uh, in the SA20 that recently concluded. Striking at almost 200, Aiden Makram. He's flying off to um, India in the IPL where he'll be captain in the, the, the Sunrisers and he'll be looking to just end it off well on a high. Deva Breves also hasn't played so much games in the IPL. He'll be looking to score some runs to show them that this is why you picked me and this is why I'm going to score runs. So it's going to be a very, very, very good um, 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 second innings of the game with the Titans looking to chase down that 185. It's going to be a fantastic as we hear the cheers. It's T20 cricket as it, on its absolute best. It's Super Sport Park. We run through that scorecard. Pelé scoring a 50 of 37. And also Marco Janssen, 56 of 34. Stubbs, 27 of 18. Patrick Kruger, that little gem of an inning, 17 of 7. We're going to take a break. We're going to need something. We're going to need a little bit of less sugar before the second <laughs> innings. KJ Pendula will start off, and it's going to be a fantastic run chase.
Ladies and gentlemen, we come back. 185 for 5 is what the Dufferbed Warriors put in the score. Two half centuries, Marco Janssen being pushed up to number 4, scoring an amazing 56 for 34. Javesh and Pelé, as good as ever as he's been throughout the whole tournament, finally getting his half century. And Patrick Kruger with a young cameo at 17 for 7. But it's those extras, 16 of them, that are certainly going to hurt the Titans. But here they are, looking to recover. Pendulo Makobane here with you. Super Sports on its YouTube channel. These are your world of champions. The defending champions are the Momentum Multiply Titans. They are undefeated. So are the Warriors. Ha, it's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen here. As where Sonopul has the ball. He has the ball indeed. I mean, we're having a bit of debate of A here. Who's going to open? We felt that uh, Marco Janssen, after getting a, a, a wicket in his first ball in the previous game, he will open. But obviously, because I mean, uh, he batted for quite a long time. And uh, Bayer Sonopul, we know what he can do also up front with the ball uh, moving around a bit. So, yeah, very interesting. 185. Good score, either way that you look at it. So it's going to be very good. Uh, interesting to see how the Titans are going to go about it. Bear Swanepoel is not as quick as a junior Dala, but we saw the areas of operation for Diane Khalem, Corbin Bosch, who are of a similar ilk in terms of speed. How much that worked for him. So here he comes to Sbonelo Makanya. Sharp delivery, movement coming back into the right hander. It's a good start from Swanapool. Yeah, very good start uh, that time around from Swanapool. As we said, the most important thing about him, not having the pace that your junior Dala and your Lizard Williams would have, but he's got movement and that's going to be very good. It's going to be very important with the score that has been put up by the title of, by the Warriors, that that required run rate is just kept in check. Partnership is going to start growing. It is nine and a half to the over that they require. It's important for them not to feel the pressure of that score because it's just going to continue nag against them with each dot ball, picking it up and up just a little bit more. Yeah, that is the beauty of T20 cricket, isn't it? That, mm. uh, you know, just string a few dot balls out there and then the run rate just goes high tremendously. So the Titans will try to make sure that they keep it in check. Not too many dot balls. At least get singles if you can't get the boundaries. Bear Swanepoel, very dangerous bowler. One of the top wicket takers in the four-day series. A couple of matches that he played in the SA20 also got some dividends for his work. Extremely accurate economical as ever is Bear Swanepoel. It's really knocking on the doors of South Africa wherever they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're in Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> and he's hitting it back of a lane. That quick single. Oh, big danger. And Makanya is gone. Bear Swanepoel. What about that? Not only is he excellent with the ball, but from the bottom of his bottoms, he finds a way to hit the stumps and Nakanya cannot make it home. Wow, what better way for the Warriors to start the innings than that. That is a wonderful following the ball up. The, the Titans fall that they could steal a single there, but Bayes Wonderpool was very much aware of what they were trying to do and he gets to the ball one-handed. Uh, he had one opportunity to throw through it, stumps down. That's the end of Makanya. Not what the Titans would have wanted. Give us Revis called instantly it was certainly there but oh, off by a mile he is gone what fielding effort from bear swanapur wow it's that is gone swanapur wow. wow. that is amazing <laughs> that is <laughs> you can't stop talking about it the oh. beauty of t20 cricket eh? <laughs> the pressure just sticks with you just watch bear swanapur this is what we call commitment this is what you must do as a bowler. Back up your bowling. 
and hustle and try to take whatever opportunity that it is insane from Bear Swanepoel. Especially as we said, it's going to be an easy target to, to mm -hmm. defend even though it's 185. But that brings uh, Rivaldo Munsami to the wicket for the Titans. Another dangerous batter is Rivaldo Munsami. One of the leading run scorers for the Titans in the four-day series. Even on top of that, yeah. it was player of the season last year for Division 2. Yes, Division yes, 2 yes. player of the season for the Northern Cape Heat. Which is why you're seeing him now in Division 1, Rivaldo Monsami. He's going to be playing to prove a point that he belongs in Division 1. Yeah, he belongs back home because this is where <laughs> it all started for mm -hmm. him years ago. Um, coming from here, going to Northern Cape and coming back here once again. Rivaldo Munsam is also the leading run scorer for the Titans in the first two days, uh, first two games that they've played so far. Really is showing his worth is Rivaldo Munsami also. Wicked keeper in his right. But what an eventful first over that we have seen here at Super Sports Park. Bill Swanepoel taking the wicket because it wasn't his. But just take a look at it again. <laughs> because it's just awesome. Look at how he covers ground. He doesn't even see the stumps. Just look at the celebration also. <laughs> that hey, he's in it. <laughs> can't get enough of that. Yeah. And can't get enough of the man who currently has the ball and will be running in for the double bed warriors. Oh, this one of who finishes job. Marco Janssen comes in. And he starts again. Remember, Bayer Sonapul is also a Titans uh, boy. Mm. He also comes from there. He actually played with Rivaldo Munsami uh, in your provincial teams and stuff. So they would know one another uh, quite well from growing up. But as we say that, with uh, Maku Janssen, who just comes back of uh, an unbeaten uh, half century early on, he comes into the attack from the um, pavilion end. Fresh from two wickets against the Dolphins. Barely giving away runs is Marku Janssen. Here he comes to Rivaldo Munsami. Ball tailing back into the pads, but Musami, <laughs> wristy as ever, you will see those trademark wrists of him come out every now and then, and he shows why. At that time around, not even trying to force it off. It's amazing how the bats have been made these days. <laughs> Just gets good timing on it, get good bet on it, and it goes over for a four runs. Just flicking those wrists to get it over to the boundary for four. Also shows that the track is still true mm. in its pace. Marco Janssen, very pacey bowler, emerging talent player for the SA20. He's been such a revelation for the Proteas as well. Yes. A few just clumsy performances in the World Cup, but his overall World Cup, when you're looking at it as a whole, one of only two South African players to make to the World Cup team of the year. Yeah, no, Hendrik Klaassen. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, he's he's definitely a rising star, and uh, the way that he's going at the moment, uh, you would say that he's actually older. What is he? He's only like twenty four years old. So you know, he's still got a long way ahead of him. Ah, uh, and just when you think that, uh, you know, when you look at some of the players who are in the fringes for South Africa and who play for South Africa and play international cricket. Some outliers who are magnificently gifted X-Factor players, we call them. Mm, mm, like, mm. Mm. How I wish I had another one of these to just <laughs> operate, only to find that Marco Janssen does have another <laughs> exact half of him. Mm. Juan Janssen, he's doing wonders in Northwest. He's having a great SH, uh, T20 challenge so far. His brother equally amazing. <laughs> Gets a top edge, it runs down to third man. Yeah. Very wonderful. I think uh, Marku Janssen actually with Jordan Herman back in 2019, they were at the same Coke weekend. They both made the SS School team. So they're teammates now and they would have played uh, against one another at the, at the, at the um, Kaya Majola week, actually it's called these days, in 2019. And then now they're playing together in the, in the same team. It's what we also love about these broadcasts, KG. It's the fact that we can now properly follow domestic cricket from these gents. Yeah. As they were still yeah. young. And now you are seeing them here. You're seeing them at the big stage. This is the stage that propels you to a contract to another 20 to mm. T20 league. Mm. This is the one that knocks the door for South Africa. T20 World Cup is around the corner coming in June. So those are spots there. And we're seeing the very best of the players come and play, just like Marco Janssen. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh! 
no. Ooh, juicy stuff. <laughs> we all waited in anticipation for that. <laughs> Marco Janssen backs up Bayer Swanepoel's opening over with one that is equally as good. A juicy, feisty short ball, that. Yeah, it is. Uh, it has been, just as we have a look at it again. Oh, wonderful bouncer there from uh, Marco Janssen in the body, making uh, Diva Breves try to play. I think teams have figured and they know that Diva Breves, most of the time he gets found wanting on that short ball. And hence, uh, Marco Janssen decided, okay, hang on. We know that he struggles a little bit with the short ball. Let me give it out there. As Bayes Swanepoel continues from the Hennups River end. Big stride into the stands by Rivaldo Monsami, flicking it down the pads. That is the easiest fall he can possibly get. This is going to be a very big partnership between these two uh, because you spoke about the four day earlier. Equally, uh, David Brevers had a very good four day, and whenever these two better together in that four day series, they really got some runs going. So, this is going to be a very um, uh, uh, good partnership. Uh, between these two if the Titans want to get closer to that total. And partnerships will be the name of the game with mm. the total as daunting as this. The required run rate currently kissing 10 runs to the over. It's currently relaxing at 9.8 and those boundaries are going to be very necessary for the Titans. Bale Swanepoel pushing it out on the offside this time. And you'll see how much of the stumps Munsami gives Bale Swanepoel on his run-up. And then he shifts across onto middle stumps to play the ball, which is why it was so easy to, for him to flick that first ball away. Bale Swanepoel saying, ah, stumps! Goes for them <laughs> and got punished. It is. It's a bit of a cat and mouse, isn't it? Mm. Where the, 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 um, the batters try to play with the mind of the bowlers a little bit. Oh, too much of a bounce. That is a great effort from Snetsemba Koshile. Very good efforts from the wicket keeper to jump and stop that because it was a certain boundary. No, definitely it was wonderful keeping. That's what you need from your keeper, isn't it? That mm -hmm. when you try to do something, especially that time around, that they back you and, and, and stop that ball. And that time around, Snetsemba Koshile just went up and uh, he made sure that there isn't extra runs that are taken value of the wicket keeper is saving those runs like a goalkeeper saving goals. Bayer Swanepoel just really targeting those stumps. Devil Brevis was found stuck on his feet, nipping back into him. But he finds a way to not get his stumps curtailed. Definitely what Bayer Swanepoel is doing is that what he doesn't have with the pace is making it up with the, with the swing. As we look at uh, the replay of that ball, just tailing in, it just kept on moving and getting into Deva Breves, who looked to give himself room, but the Bayer Swanepoel just followed him that time. Oh, this is great control from Swanepoel. This is what we told you, is what you're going to expect from this man. Doesn't give much away, and then he does take something away from the opposition team. He's such a lethal wicket taker as Bayer Swanepoel. The thing is, if it doesn't give you anything with the ball, it gives you something with the bat. Yeah. <laughs> it's just one of those that uh, he's an ace to have in the team. Moving across the stumps, calls for the single quickly does Rivaldo Monsami. That is good trust from Diervald Brevis. He doesn't even look at the ball, trust the call of his teammates. And it's a single to end over number three. They need 173 to win from 102. Yeah, I think, you know, it's three overs, only 13 runs have been scored, uh, but I think uh, the, the momentum multiplier Titans will probably have to take a bit of uh, pages out of the Warriors uh, 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 book, where earlier when the Warriors were betting also, they didn't get off to a flyer in the first six overs. It looked like it was a bit difficult. At one point we thought, ah, they might only get to 150, 160 if even. Uh, but they managed to get that 185. So the Titans will have to look now and say we got to be patient as we look at the wonderful crowd that we have here at Super Sport Park. I mean, it is a school night, but we still have people coming out. That shows that uh, there's entertaining cricket that's been played. Of course, two teams that have played two games and have both won their games. So it is a big game, and hence we've got a, a nice crowd out there. It's two teams who've had brilliant seasons so far. It was going all so well for the Warriors in the four-day series until they came here and found a 13-run defeat as Nielan van Heerden comes in. 
Niren van Nielden really comes in the wrong way. Makashile <laughs> again showing that he is on the money. And Pendulo, you must teach me those tricks, eh? Makashile. <laughs> <laughs> They come, uh, they come with a lot of experience. Yeah, um, I'm gonna say you're making them sound easy, but we know how easy yeah, they, they, they come from the <laughs> womb. Just and it see, it looks like Koshila's dives and stops are also coming from the womb here today. It just looks so natural. Yeah. Oh, this is a big problem. But the height just looking to be a little bit too much. Squared up there was Rivaldo Monsami. Yeah, it looked like a bit of a height there. It looked like it was also going down a mm. bit. Um, Rivaldo Monsami obviously targeting that uh, square leg. There is no deep square leg. Trying to target that. As you say, as you look at him in the highlight there, just standing outside that leg stump. Mm. Just and good. Uh, it just Ooh. comes across and tries to get it over. But yeah, it looked like it was going down that time around. The movement hasn't stopped. We are four overs in. It's cooler, so the ball will move just a little mm, bit more mm, in the night sky. Mm. Oh, <laughs> coming back in to give up feathers, but he stands and delivers, swings at it, and into the boundary it goes. Yeah, and, and again, he didn't have too much control of that, but then he had a very big swing in it, gets a thick 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 inside edge on the inside of the bed and uh, it just goes down to that boundary for a four very brave shot with the ball coming back in from Neil and Van Heerden so hard to time great lengths those are but the placement from Devil Brevis was also very good just a little bit mistimed but doesn't matter they push a man at square leg for that protection he stands next to deep fine leg who are your only two fielders outside of the inner ring. But Nilan van Heerden is really struggling with his lines here. Yeah. I think he's trying to target those thumbs uh, a little bit more and uh, on two occasions in this over so far he's just balled one down to that leg side. Too much down the leg side for a, an extra. We spoke a little bit earlier about how many extras the Titans have pulled and the Warriors would be looking to say that hang on let's not try to give away too many extras and in the fourth over Nilan has already pulled uh, two of those extras not ideal goes a little bit shorter lucky not to be called wide at that time with the ball bouncing and nipping behind the back of Deval Brevis but yeah. he evades that Going short is definitely a tactic that a lot of teams employ against the Devil Bravers, especially early on. And you can see they've got the field set up for it. They've got a deep square leg and a fine leg uh, to say, you know, you know what, you can attack us. The nice thing about the Warriors where they are at the moment is that they've put a good score on the, on the board and now they're looking to defend it and they can look at trying to do such things to tempt the better to go for a big shot. Can we do it now? Goes for it. Not short yeah. enough. It's waist heights from Neil and Van Heerden and Davis wastes no time to dispatch that into the cow corner boundary for four. Yeah, very good shot. It's always good to have a better when he pulls the ball and he hits it in front of square in that time around. He had control over it, hits it in front of square. This is the big over that uh, the Titans would have been looking for. It's an issue here. He's not finding his lines. If he's not finding his lines, it's the length that's missing. That one, a good line, but just a little bit short yeah. for where he wants to be there. Yeah. Brevis will feast on those every day of the week. All day, every day, and twice on a Sunday. Ooh. Oh, it seems like it's Van Nierten is also feasting on these wides. Yeah. Third one for the over. It looked like Devil Brevis obviously just went outside that leg stump and uh, uh, Van Heerden tried to follow him but he just went too far down the leg side and uh, it's just called a wide day by the, by the Empire. Good over so far from the Titans getting 11 runs from it after only getting 13 runs from the first three overs. Just four balls as well for those 11 runs. Big gift. That's Whoa. another one from Brevis. Get out of your oh. ball. And he drops it in the embankments. Down goes 20,000 runs, but in goes six runs into the scoreboard. So close! Ooh. And he is a cricketer. That is a cricketer that plays, plays for Cineville Cricket Club here at the Titans. 
and he just put that one down. His teammates won't be happy with him doing that. Oh, the classic <laughs> no look six from Diavald Brevis. Martin Kaptelesk. Oh, so gorgeous. That's Shut the up. area, but oh. like you say, Garrido, oh. please guide us through that monstrosity yeah. of the court. Shot, Diego Brevis. <laughs> Stop it, I like it. That is a wonderful shot to end the fourth over, which is the over that the Titans have been looking for. They get 21 from that over. Wonderful shot from Diego Brevis. Just waits for it. Ah, oh. oh, look at that. Picture perfect. He just waits for it. He hits. And after hitting it, he stops and says, Take a picture of that one because it's a wonderful shot. I don't just like it, KG. I like it a lot. <laughs> Takes us to the end of over number four. What a look at that! Devil Brevis! What a money shot! 36 for one after four. The Titans now need 150 from just 16 overs. Sonapool needs magic in his third over. Really needs something. That's a good start. It is a very good start. I think. Um if they over, you just suspect that if they over from Van Yerden went to well, Swanepoel might have been held back a little bit, but because it went for so much, mm. and uh, Swanepoel has probably been the banker in this inning so far, not giving too much away, he has to continue uh, just to make sure that he can get them out of that power play without the Titans doing too much damage. Oh, the usage of Swanepoel so early, but he's bowling so well. He is the instigator of that solitary wicket of Sponelo Makanya through some salacious, delicious, delectable piece of fielding of his own bowling, causing the run out. He's here hunting for one that will be counted under his name. Bears Swanapo. Munsami, he's hungry for more runs. He has plenty of them under his bag this season. Oh, wonderful shot. That is glorious. Allows the ball to come into his body. Those wrists again from Munsami coming alive and guiding the ball down to the third man boundary. Kruger running as hard as he can. He cannot stop that. He cannot stop that. It's a wonderful off the plate from Rivaldo Munsami. Just have a look at it there. A bit of room outside the off stop and it just leans back on it a little bit. Those risks that you were talking about a little bit earlier getting into play there. Oh, looking to go for it again. Be careful, Monsami. That's how you get bottom edges and lose your wickets. He's thinking about that because that's exactly what could happen. But he also feels like he missed out on a short and wide delivery. Yeah, I think uh, he just felt that there is a, a lot of width and uh, land for him there to be able to hit it over. But that time around, he just didn't. Of course, we're still in the power play. There's lots of gaps for him to try and get. Comes across. He calls for a quick single. Marco Janssen is standing at mid on. Dares not take it on. Just a single. Oh, this has been some <laughs> exhilarating stuff. Just needs to take some breaths in. Bear Swanepoel. It looked like there was a chat there between Bayer Sonopoul and Rivaldo Munsami as I said that they would know one another quite well. It looked like they, they were going at it a little bit there in a nice friendly way. <laughs> His last ball from Sonopoul. Oh, it's the outside part of his bat. Devil Brevis is not in trouble. All of the Titans faithful around the stands were crying for that ball to just hit the ground. And a huge sigh of relief across the Supersport Park as it lands safely. Overs number five coming to a close. And what a start it has been. 43 for one. 33 for one it is as I welcome, uh, oh, we welcome Gert into the commentary. And I'll be off. Gert to join Pendulo. Dr. Gert joins us here. Man, he's going to enjoy the cricket that is on display. Yeah, I'm, I'm having some coffee, so the energy will be uh, a bit lower now until the caffeine <laughs> kicks in. Oh my goodness, <laughs> as if you need more coffee. As we look at this, 185 is what is being chased. Oh. Deval Brevis, Rivaldo Monsami still alive. Marco Janssen not giving much away. Five runs in his first over, and here he comes. Oh, big swing. Monsami and Brevis want to get on with it, and... Uh, 
We were mentioning wide ball given there. We mentioned earlier that Brevis hasn't quite gotten going yet in this tournament. And Munsami has had one or two starts, also not really hitting his traps. It was at this ground where we had that four-day exhilarating game. And Munsami was the changer there where he scored at 124 of 140 balls. It's a uh, big Janssen coming in to Munsami. Oh, inside edge. And uh, nearly a breakthrough. Like we said, previous over from Bear Swanepoel with that one short and wide. Be careful, Munsami. That inside edge might get you one thing. So lucky for it not to get him out. But you know, as you speak about that 124, it speak about how clutch he is. But you're not going to be clutch if you lose your wickets. Very lucky to be alive after that. Yeah, back angle. Very strange there for a man with the class of Munsami. Very angled bat. Now it's Brevis facing up to uh, Marco Janssen. Some short stuff incoming. Maybe not. <laughs> a quick single, another shot at the stumps. And I'll tell you what, the Warriors fielding has been on song. They really are enjoying it up here in Centurion. That was Tristan Stubbs. We know he's a fantastic fielder. Very quick across the park. What, what can Tristan Stubbs do? He really can do everything. This man can take the gloves. He can fly through the air because Brevis might have been in real trouble with his bat hanging in the air. Not sliding it in. That was gone for all money. Whew. Oh, pick up shot. Lovely flick. Munsami. And has that gone all the way? Not one down score. Fantastic shot. The Fofa. What glorious glorious timing and risks from Rivaldo Monsami and what a stylish way to bring up 50 runs for the Titans just the prance at the end of it just oozing class like you were talking about it look at that these bats these days those shots 10 years ago you would have chased him off a pitch if that <laughs> happened now you're applauding it Quick call of no as he saw Tristan Stubbs was on the money again. Nice quick walk in, just cutting off that angle like the uh, great John D. Rhodes used to do there at backward point. It's a good decision. The score is currently 52 because it was actually adjudicated that Munsami's four is actually a six. So it was given a six runs, takes the score to 52 and also brings the partnership up to 51 runs now between Munsami and Brevis. Oh, oh fantastic oh. shot! Two bounces and into the super sport, super sport park fence. Lovely shot over backward point. I can't help myself. <laughs> that was ridiculous. What a great shot from oh. Munsami! Fantastic shot. Goosebump stuff. Oh. Look at that. It's the bravery to take it over the top, Gert. The risk to so just use that pace against him. Gorgeous batting from Munsami. Oh! And this is the reply of what you would expect from your Pratia bowler. As Marco Janssen said, I have had absolutely enough and there was an absolute slaughter of a delivery. Oh, Munsami had no clue how to deal with that. Marco Janssen shows that how dare you hit triple 10 runs like that. Let's look at this delivery. Oh, vicious. Bashir was so close as well. He's been phenomenal behind the stumps. Could have easily just landed into his webbing. Counts himself lucky there, Rivaldo Munsami. Bushele has been good with the gloves and with the hands for a long time now. Couple of seasons he's been knocking on that door. He's been knocking, he's scoring runs as well. It is the end of the sixth over, 57 for the loss of one. As we see uh, a bowling change. As uh, Sia Semetu coming into the attack. Taking the pace off a little bit. Sia Semetu really capitalizing on his jump into the Warriors. He's mm -hmm. been really phenomenal. 32 years old now, Siasimetu. 
It's been around for a very long time in the previous franchise era. He was stuck in the level below the six franchise teams, playing in your three-day cricket, playing in your semi-pro division. Here he is now. Oh, run, uh, good run, good run, immediate call by Devil Brevis. Not the greatest throw from Nieland van Heerden yeah. there. The, uh, way off target, didn't look like I was in the same postcode. And with that run-up, you almost say that he's not going to take the pace off. It almost looks like a medium pacer coming in, but he does. It's a left-arm slow bowler. Oh, fantastic mm. cut shot. Diavol Brevis has packed in the hands tonight. What a lovely shot, lovely timing. Superb. And we were talking about how he's bowling it a little bit quicker. That shot from Brevis just demonstrates that. Didn't do too much with it just allowed the bat, allowed the hands to do what it needs to do to a quick delivery. Great placement for four. Now fantastic placement and uh, I just like it when Brevis backs in his hands. Those hands are so remarkable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We always talk about his, his power but the timing, even that, just look how the, just the sound of the bat for that single just sounds immaculate yeah. and when he's in full cry, I'll tell you what, that 81 balls for that 123 might come get a lot closer. The biggest worry for the Warriors is that both of them are on song. Oh, just shimming down the track. Making sure that even though the boundaries are coming, they're making sure that there's no dots. And you, this is the difference now between the innings of the Titans and the Warriors. Yeah. For the first 10 overs, we really didn't see a lot of rotation on strike from the Warriors as batting. And it's a stark contrast from what we are seeing with this partnership. Already it has grown up to 65 runs with just easy batting between the two. It's really sensational. Just doing some uh, gardening there. Here's Munsami. Eyeing up the field. Ooh. <laughs> bit of a, b -b -bit of a, a fake delivery there. Maybe thought that Munsami was going to come down charging at him again. This time just standing his ground. Oh, there was a little bit of turn. The ball just straightening up on the right-hander. Big Marco Janssen picks it up as we have a change in gloves for Devil Brevis. We've come accustomed to seeing this from him. He likes to change his gloves. The score has moved on to 66 for the loss of one. Devil Brevis is 28 of 17. Rivaldo Munsami is 32 of 24 and uh, 120 more required to win in the next 13 overs. Oh, it's going to be one heck of a finish. They are doing such an incredible job here. I'm trying to figure out as I'm watching here, Gertz, whether or not is it the pitch that has just become lightning good but hasn't been much time going over the game or are the Warriors struggling to find the areas that the Titans are trying or is just the difference in the batting caliber? I don't know what it is, but it seems like the Titans are batting on a 220 run pitch here. Yeah, it does look different. It does look like they works it out in their bowling innings and the Warriors haven't done so as yet, especially the man in your screen now, Van Yerden, coming in, bowling at Munsami. Hmm. A lovely little bit of lift and it's just is one or two deliveries has just had a little bit of extra venom in it. That's the thing. But we don't see that enough because in his first over, Neil and Van Neerten was just a little bit too straight. It's as if he was failing to control that movement of the ball coming into the right-hander. Therefore, finding him culprit of three wides down that leg side and a lot of deliveries where I should just flicked off the pads. That first ball that was exactly where he needs to be every single time because the movement is still alive. Just keep it on the fifth stump, fourth stump line to let the threat be alive. Oh, and it does cramp up Devil Brevis as well. The rotation has been fantastic. Like I said, that was a fantastic delivery. Mm. Just punching it through to that sweeper that's on the fence. 
but it will bog them down a little bit. It will slow the scoring and hopefully build some frustration when it comes to Devil Brevis and Munsami who's been striking at 150, 140. We actually saw that with Matthew Pritzker's wickets where he was being bogged down by the Titans bowling until he caved. Fantastic. Just dabbing it down to third man. See, but that's the thing. Your Matthew Pritzker's they were not doing this. They were not rotating the strike as fluidly as the Titans are. It's as if they are really using that home ground advantage. Patrick Kruger will be coming in to bowl as well. I mean, he played a divine 17 from 7. But the team needs wickets now. And uh, the problem that the Warriors have is this Titans lineup go deep. Panjerdin into Brevis. Ah, oh, short ball, wide called. There was a bit of excitement there. They might have felt that there was something on it. But Trishile didn't feel there was anything. Normally the keepers will let you know. And it was only the bowler who was almost begging for it not to be called a wide. It's what it really seems. Just little struggles here for Nielen van Heerden. Of course he's going to get it right. He is a quality bowler. It's just that tonight not has been hasn't been hitting the mark it's short like ball the, against previous oh. never a bad idea this time just straying on to the hip again and an easy one for brevis and they doubling up on the misfield and the warriors are just letting it slip in the field this is not great work by pilay who scored a 50 himself but it doesn't mean you can give away runs <laughs> in the field now it doesn't get deducted Oh, oh, they need man. to wake up. They need to get intent. Intensity is one thing, but they need to get the intent up as well. If we're going to do something, do it wholeheartedly. You know, this is what we call death by a thousand cuts. Oh, <sighs> Brevis just shimming down on that leg stump. They did. And played a little bit uppishly and nearly gave it away. 100%. See, the little Titans here. They didn't bring a shotgun or a machete or a kimot or a sword. No, they just came here with scalpels, cutting the little arteries of the warriors and letting them bleed out. So you see every single single that's been taken, they can't stop it. And you see it just eating away from you. And every now and then, there's an over where they'll get two, three boundaries. And eventually, it's just going to run away from them ever so slowly. It's much better bowling, much better bowling by Van Yerden, but not good fielding off his uh, own bowling there. As it comes the end to the over, and uh, the eighth over is gone 72 for the loss of one. And the Delphi Bet Warriors is under the pump here. It's almost like they pitched up for the batting, but the fielding is letting them down a little bit. They really need to pick it up, and they need to squeeze a couple of dot balls together. But the problem is now you look at some of the boundaries that were scored. You see some of the bowling from Marco Janssen, some of the bowling from Bea Swanepoel, along we put aside Neil and Van Heerten. Those two have been bowling brilliantly. The areas that they've been bowling have been excellent, but the batting in retaliation has been even better. Brevis 31 from 21, Munsami 34 from 26. They're showing that the good balls are being pushed for ones. Some good balls are being hit for fours. Where do you bowl to stop that pressure, Gert? That's the question. So they try to bring Patrick Kruger and see if they can bring an answer. Patrick Kruger, fantastic bowler. He scored a, a little cameo of 17 runs at the back end of the Warriors innings. Coming into Munsami. Another flick. This could be a wicket. And whoa, a little bit of a juggler. And... Uh, just giving the ball a kiss is Van Yerden because that would have been disastrous for the Warriors. Wake a time! Falling for the trap, Rivaldo Munzami. That is what Milan Van Yerden should have been looking to do. Those are the areas. That ball coming in to Munzami as Van Yerden does. But he got the catch off Kruger's bowling. Talking. We saw him stretch earlier like he bowled, he batted well. We're going to need him for his bowling. And here he is. First delivery. 
needing no introduction, Munsami being a little bit fancy and <laughs> almost putting it down there, Van Heerden. Oh, the juggler, Van Heerden. And this is the man, you can just hear the sound in the crowd. Everyone is excited to see. It's the guest keeper, Aiden Markram. Oh man, will he need a captain's innings? 71 run partnership breaking between Brevis and Munsami. The song that's been played in the background is Daddy Cool. Yeah. Yes, Daddy Captain <laughs> is Aiden Markram. Captain, the sun rises higher, you know, sun rises Eastern Cape to a championship of the SA20. Of course, he'll be going to Sunrisers Hyderabad later on in the tournament. He won't be available for all 14 games of the Titans. So he will want to make an impact for the ones he's involved in. He's already scored a 40 in his first game. Mm -hmm. Didn't fire in the last. Here he is now. 114 to win from 71. And uh, Kruger, tail up. This is the wicket they want. Very interesting to see on your screens there that Brevis was giving him some tips on how to play and where to go to. He's been there for a couple of deliveries as young devil Brevis. Kruger into Markram. Oh, solid behind it. See, getting a wicket on your first ball is just going to give you so much confidence. It's also just going to put the batting side in a little bit of a hold like okay this man has his tail up he's just gotten a wicket uh, let's just play him off his first over which will allow Kruger to ease into his rhythm much more come on I'm going for the pull and oh, one bounce to that man Van Yerden again oh and very nearly the plan working twice in a row who says lightning doesn't strike oh, of course and his patrick kruger's number is two two so two twos it will strike again lucky enough there for aiden markram oh just not reaching van heerden gets him off the mark okay. and uh it's devil brevis who's facing up he's 31 of 21. <laughs> Will he also play the ball down to fine leg now? Because clearly it seems to be the case with Patrick Kruger. Oy. Oh, he went for it. A bit of an appeal. Called one for the over. The Chile had something there. Kruger wasn't too interested. It always works best when both you and the wicket keeper are in tandem in your appeal and then the rest of the team starts to join in that was a very good short ball just over the shoulder of Deval Brevis very well directed as well the direction is very commendable so easily it could have popped onto the man at short third man in Siasimeto oh, just tucking Brevis up playing it off the hip He's just had the tendency in the last couple of deliveries just to go towards that leg stump a little bit, trying to maybe force the bowlers to go straight at him. We know how he loves to go downtown. So that might be a plan, but thus far, Kruger, fantastic over, picked up the big wicket of Munsami. It's also a thing, Gert, where you're trying to open that offside as well with the ball coming back into you as a right-hander being squeezed onto the leg side all the time it's not nice oh, Aiden Markram now being squeezed and again Van Yerden he's been busy in this over picked up the ball getting it in and that was uh, the end of the over nine gone 74 for two hundred and twelve still needed run rate required has gone up just over ten now but they are batting at 8.7, so thus far, not really an issue for the uh, Titans. You also look at the fact that they still have eight wickets in hand. Okay, we, we're still pretty good. We're still pretty safe. But it's going to be important. It's going to be important that the partnership that we saw from Brevis and Monsami, the running, that pushing into space, getting the ones, keep it moving like that. And Brevis... Markram, good runners between the wickets, so we hope to, to see more of that. Just as a case study, to see that T20 cricket is also cricket in its own right. Yeah, Andile Mohakani is going to be another bowler who's uh, 
Going to be a bit under pressure. Devil Brevis is in his 32 of 23, but he's uh, going to be bowling to Aiden Markram. Oh, how much would it mean to him to take this wicket? The big wicket of Markram. Again, just on the pads. And these two are so good off the legs. You don't really want to go there because it just allows them to rotate that strike. The issue now is that, have, have you seen Aiden Markram's cover drive? even on the up devil brevis is also so it's a thing of everywhere it's just a sword for the bowler it's like where do i bowl so mohakane just attack the stumps if you hit i miss pray for the best it's what's happening right now protection three men patrolling the leg side boundary for that straight delivery as well oh and this time brevis working it around the corner one bounce just eluding that man at a long leg he just got moved over or so ago from the final position to that long leg and just couldn't reach it oh just worked around the pads you're talking about it guys they are so dangerous around the pads why are you drifting there but also what can you do when you have protection for that particular delivery but the man is just not quick enough to get across also, very dirty delivery, naughty delivery that from Mohakane. Drifting down the leg side, short enough to just be worked around without any stress from Brevis. And I think with the hands that Brevis has, I mean, if he works it around at any sort of pace, that ball's going to keep flying. Mm. We just see a bit of a mid-wicket conference here by the two batters. Just get hurrying on there by the umpire. Oh, Kakan, I think the idea was perfect, but the the line that he bowled, just straight down leg side, it should be more round about the chest area, mm. right onto the body of Brevis. That will bring those three gentlemen into play. Not there. Definitely not there. <laughs> Another sick to devil, Brevis. And he didn't even get hold of it. It's half a dozen. He slapped that away. You would think, you would think that the man at deep cover had a chance. The wave was so flatly hit. But all he could do is just jump over it. But you must say, it's going to be a little bit positive for the Warriors because it was a slight opportunity there. Slight, but just connection enough for Brevis. Again, just moving, shimming away to that leg side. Being adjudicated a wide, I think uh, he might feel that it went over his head a bit. But, sorry, but that six was almost like an open face slap, wasn't mm -hmm. it? It really was. That's why my first description was, oh man, he really did slap that. Uh, there's a new competition, a new uh, fighting competition. It's a power oh, slap or yes, something. The face slap, the one, face yeah. slap thing. Uh, that bat belongs there, clearly. Oh, this one is just a nothing delivery. And it looks like we've got a catch in the crowd. And it's a no-no. Sorry about that. You just lost some money. And it's another half a dozen to Diego Brevis. That bat belongs in the Power Slab competition. He has cracked that away. So effortlessly made it look too. So easy. Devil Brevis. Just look at this. Oh. And deliver. Thank you very much. That was an absolute nothing ball. And in Mokakane, go fetch. I just love how he uses his whole body to hit that ball. It, it looks like a golf swing where you're shifting the weight with your hip, across with your waist. It's just one beautiful flow. Oh man, Brevis. Again, going to that leg side, cutting it away. This time, the man at, man at sweeper fence can come in. That was almost a letdown. It's only one. <laughs> what an anticlimactic situation, dear Val Brevis. But he's done really well. So many runs in this over. 19 already from Andile Mohakane. Not a good look. Now he has one final ball in this over. It's 
very well managed. Tried a lot of slow balls, Mohakane, but what was not slow was the rate at which they scored off him. 19 runs from that over, 10 have been completed, and thus we shall have a change in commentary. In comes back Kakejo, who's going to join Dr. Gert. It is our local resident superhero, KG, coming in. <laughs> Quite the introduction there, Mr. Maloney. Ah, oh, the Panther. <laughs> Here we Very go. good here. I've, I've seen the first over from uh, Van Heeren a bit earlier on the lesser experienced bat, uh, bowler going for 21 runs. And now Mohakani also getting the same treatment. So two uh, first overs from the lesser experienced batters, mm -hmm. bowlers has mm -hmm. gone for 40 runs. Wonderful batting from the Titans. Oh, fantastic batting and they know Brevis. They're just bowling nothing deliveries at him at the moment. And here we go, Devil Brevis. That's his first half century. That's going to be his first half century in this T20 knockout. Fantastic batting. Raise your bat, young man. Fantastic batting there from Devil Brevis. And it came in a very good quick time. 50 of just 28 balls. A much needed innings from him. Getting the confidence going into the IPL, it's a very, big, very, very big innings from him, and he'll be feeling very pleased about this knock so far. But the job is not done yet. The job is not done yet. He still needs to go through. We'll see the little shimmy as he faces his next ball. Adam Markram. What a fantastic, experienced player to have on the other side. <laughs> this one just slapped into mid wicket, and great fielding there. Oh, Looked like wow. Bayer Swanepoel just stopping a couple of runs there. That one was going to the fence. It was money. going like a tracer bullet. A nice cross bat shot there from Aiden Makram. You know, the difference between playing across the line and a cross bat, and that time around was a good execution of a cross bat uh, from Aiden Makram. Wonderful fielding, of course, from uh, Bayer Swanepoel to prevent it to go to the boundary. Great field in his own right. Of course, he was the creator of that first run out of his <laughs> own, bo own bowling. Yeah. yeah. So he, he's giving the, his bowling partners as much as he gave himself when he was uh, bowling a bit earlier on. Oh, this one is going. Is this going to be the wicket? Yes, he's given it away. Devil Brevis gave it away. And uh, oh no, this is not what the Titans wanted going on in right or not. 50 up for Brevis. And then wicket time for Patrick Kruger. Yeah, we spoke about how he needs to take this innings deep, but unfortunately that time around uh, just holding off that short ball that he has been struggling with for quite some time and that time around uh, just not getting um, enough on it and uh, getting uh, caught there by the cow corner. Wow. And now replacing the Evo Brevis as if it can't get worse for the Warriors is the man that's going to the IPL on a huge hike. The player of the series in the SA20. The man who was striking at nearly 200. It is the one, the only, Heinrich Klaassen. Yeah, he's the man of the moment. He's, he's really been probably one of the best white ball, ball uh, players we've had in South Africa for the last two seasons or so. And uh, all over the world where he's gone. He was in America the other time. Also scoring some runs at the IPL, at the SA20. He'll be looking to side off. This is, of course, his first game of this uh, CSA, of this year's CSA T20 Challenge. And he'll be looking to say to the teammates that before I go to India, here are some runs. It's going to be a big innings here from uh, Henry Klassen. And for the Warriors, they're hoping there's a bit of pitch rust there, that they can get him early. Because if these two are going to get going, we're going to go home early. Mm. It is Patrick Kruger coming into Heinrich Klaassens. <laughs> Just from that, it's, it's not, he didn't hit it to the boundary or anything else, but he, he just looks so sad. Every time when he bats and he comes out, it just looks like he's got more time than anybody else. And that time around, just going back, just easy as you like, pushing it to that point. What an amazing talent we have here. Yeah, it's the timing that he has and the amount of time he has, doesn't matter who bowls at him. And then he gets into these extraordinary positions when he plays these mm. shots. <laughs> oh, this time just ducking away from it. Patrick Kruger. Oh, he <laughs> is at, at this moment, he's putting a man of the match performance together. That's 17 off 7 at the back end. 
that last over mm. and then also now already in his second over only conceding four runs thus far picking up two massive wickets yeah very definitely i mean he came he broke the big partnership and then he got the other man that was part of that partnership so he's really putting his hand up here yeah, really really play, uh, having a good game here patrick kruger oh heinrich clausen <laughs> says uh, i'll just oh! 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 <laughs> looks like it's a young boy there uh, grabbing a, a one-hander there, you just have to look, looks like uh, uh, schoolboy, I don't think he qualifies, it looks like oh. he's under the age of 18. But I'll tell you what, where's all those big guys <laughs> who dropping the catches? Let the youngster teach you how to catch. And that's the 100 up for the Titan, being brought up in a fantastic way by Henry Klassen, hitting a 6 over that mid wicket and the 102 for 3. After 11 overs are the momentum multiply titans. It was just the timing. He, he ducked under one and then this one just didn't come up as much as the previous one. Yeah. And he just absolutely spanked it for six up. As we see Neil and Van Eerden coming in again. Oh, he's going to be under pressure. Yeah, Malcolm definitely. will probably just take the one and tell Klaassen to get on with it. Oh, bit of an expansive shot there <laughs> by Aiden Markram, also going off to the IPL, so yeah. might feel that he wants to play a couple of shots as well, just yeah. to get his uh, his season going. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, the SA20 that he had also was a bit underwhelming for him, and obviously so far in the two innings that he's played in this CSA T20 Challenge, he also hasn't really scored a lot of runs. Captain of the, of the team, he'll also be looking to leave a wonderful present for the Titans. Oh, a bit of an expansive shot again, just playing away from his body, getting an inside edge and uh, doubling up. That's two runs to Aiden Markram and uh, what a strong throw that was from the fence. <laughs> Even going past your, 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 your wicket keeper there. Yeah, just Markram in just the last ball there, he just looked a touch unsure of what he was looking to do. And now the run rates have just evened out. <laughs> the run rate required is 9.5. And they're batting at 9.3 at the moment. Oh, this is close to call. Wickets is going to be important for the Warriors. Oh, this oh. one is slapped over point one bounce into the grass embankment. Another four runs. Aiden Markram getting on with it. Yeah, getting on, uh, being part of the show here. I think what what what's very um, look like it's an intentional attack from the Titans that they're trying to put as much pressure as possible on the bowlers that are, are not that experienced. I mean, Petru Kruger has gone and has bowled two overs for just 11 runs, taking two wickets. He's basically t stolen two overs out of the game and now they need to attack the other guys and they're doing that, just that. Oh, this one was uh, Q ended. Eight ball corner pocket. It looks like it was right into the uh, grill area as well. And they'll have a drink there as the physio comes in. And it's 78 runs more required. And it's off 78. Oh, sorry, our 50 balls. It's 78 to win our 50 deliveries. And it looks like Markram and Klaassens are in a hurry to get this over with. There's also, of course, bonus points to play for. And the reason the Warriors are on top of the log, there's four teams that play 2-1-2, but they are the only team who's received bonus points in each of their games. In each of their games, definitely. So that's what makes this match so intriguing, is that the, light, the Warriors come into the game after getting two bonus points. The Titans have won both the games. The last one, the last one, they needed Aaron Pangiso at the end to win the game for them. They're hitting two big sixes at the end. So. It's a very intriguing game that we're getting here where the, the, the Warriors would have been looking to continue to get the bonus point and the Titans would also have felt coming into this game that let's try to get a bonus point but it's evenly matched isn't it? It just looks like it's evenly matched. As we said a bit earlier on, the rate achieved at the moment is 9.3 and the required is 9.4 so they really evenly matched at the moment. Yeah, still seven wickets in hand. Van then coming into Markram. After being hit in the helmet, looks pretty decent. Yeah, <laughs> looks like there's no problems <laughs> there. He knows that he's still at Supersport Park. 
Yeah, just the swing of the bat, mm-hmm. and that's something that we've seen from Makram in the last uh, two, three seasons or so. The intentional way of just swinging the bat, and that time around, doing exactly the same thing. He just goes full blooded at the shots whenever he's looking to hit the ball away. Yeah, it does have a much more positive intent over the last couple of seasons. It's been working for him. Ada Markram is striking at 100. Oh, Van Heerden can be lucky to get away with that full toss on the legs of uh, Heinrich Klaassen. Looks like it was just a bit of a slower, might have taken off the pace a tad. And he's just thanking him, say thank you very much for not hitting me in the crowd there. Yeah, it looks like a bit of a weird exchange there. I'm not sure Henrik Klassen with the form that he's in is a guy that you want to get under his skin no. because he'll hit you out of, out of his skin. Yeah, he'll hit you out of your own skin. <laughs> As you look at the scorecard there, Makanya was the first to go. Brilliant run out by Swanepoel of his own bowling. And then Deval Brevis was 50 of 29. Rivaldo Munsami was 34 of 27. And now the two seniors batters for the Titans yeah. and the, one of the most exciting players in the last couple of years Heinrich Klaassen has joined uh, his skipper Aidan Markram at the crease yeah it's going to be a very important over this I think from uh, Patrick Kruger has bowled wonderful two overs and it's going to be very important how he bowls this one yeah bowling to Klaassen who tucks him around the corner and threw mid wicket for one who spanked him for a big six the last ball of the uh, la- his last over but it's very important, we, we talk about batting partnerships and that sort of thing, but bowling partnerships are so important mm, because he's mm, been building mm, pressure on one side mm. and the other side has just been leaking runs. No, of course, of course. It's very important, obviously, to try and complement what your, 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 your bowler is doing. When the pressure is created from that side, you need to maintain it this side. At least try to get a wicket or so just to keep yourself in the game. But it doesn't help if the one over goes for five and the other one goes for 13 because that means that then you're going at nine and over, which is not what you're looking for. Oh, and again he drops it short and this time round it is Aiden Markram. It says, thank you very much, Mr. Kruger. <laughs> Getting in the groove here, yeah, Aiden Makram. Very important. Uh, would have looked and said, you know what? This is the game that I can try to get some ra- some runs on. Petru Kruger has been bowling really well, but he's just in the last two or in the last uh, few balls or so, he's just pitching the ball short. He's not. He doesn't have really that pace to threaten uh, batters, especially batters of this caliber. And we see Brietzka now having a chat with his bowler there. Even Marku Jansen coming across and saying, listen, mate. I don't think these are the two you want to try with the, yeah. with the short ball. Kruger not the quickest guy in the world, mm. pace-wise. So uh, let's see, maybe just pitch it up a tad. Oh, and this time nearly castled him. Looks like he might have just taken off the pace on that one a little bit. Aiden Markram just throwing his head back. And asking himself, how did I miss that? Yeah, and that, that is where Petru Kruger, with the pace that he has, that's exactly where he needs to be. Not in the body and not short, and that's where he needs to be. Try to make the batsman to try and try and do something, hit the ball in different areas. We mentioned the cover drive of Markram. Maybe having played one of the two of those expensive cover drives, mm. this one just. Through mid-wicket again, it looks like they want to turn for a second and again just a tumble in the field. Brings <laughs> There's no respite at the <laughs> moment for them because Adam Markram has just spanked you for a six, taken a single off you and now you got a ball to Heinrich Klaassen who's in the form of his life. The field is uh, very spread for Klaassen's. Got three guys on the leg side. Again, just shimming to that leg side. Again, just the one. It is that man at Deep Maron. And also, uh, they got the three boundary riders. It's almost like they went defensive at the moment. Yeah, but I. I think what we spoke about that there was a lot of pressure that's been let off from the other side mm. and so far 
even though they've gone defense uh, a little bit more defensive, they've still kept up with the rate. I mean, uh, this mm-hmm. over has gone for nine runs uh, with the ball still to come. And that is a lovely time shot, that deep go, 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 go. point fielder. Just getting into the game and making use of the misfield, or shall I say the, the thumble that he had there. And it's doubling up. And the score has moved on to 121 for the loss of three after 13 overs. Patrick Kruger, who started all fantastically well, picked up two great wickets. But just had a little bit of tap in the last two overs yeah. with the compliments of Clarsen and Markram. Yeah, I think that's what we're saying that, you know, the momentum of bowling well is just not maintained by the Warriors. And that's why it has allowed um, the batters to feel comfortable on the other side and in turn transferring the pressure back onto Petru Kruger when he comes back on the other side. And risk free cricket got one shot ball, hit it for six, and it just went one, 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 two. They're ahead. As we teach all the youngsters going in fives and sevens, as Marco Janssen coming into the attack. And what you mentioned now is very important because that's why I mentioned that the fielding has gone so defensive is that they got to restrict them, mm. stop the boundaries, and then also they got to stop the ones as well. Yeah. Let's see what Marco Janssen can do against Heinrich Klaassen. Oh! oh, and he's bowled him off the pads. What a bowling change that is. And Supersport Park has gone completely quiet. Wow, what, a, what an inspired bowling change, isn't it? Coming around the wicket, Marco Janssen against a man that he knows very well what he can do. His Protea teammate just pulls it in out from the pads of Hendrik Klassen and he castles him. This is a massive wicket for the Warriors and the pacer does it. It almost looks like that ball just straightened up and go, no, uh, sorry, nipped back and might have kept a tad low as well. Under class, inspecting that one to get up to his uh, his belly button, and it just stayed low. But that is the big wicket. That is a massive wicket at this time of the game, especially with the way that the game is going. We've been saying about how the Titans have been keeping up with their run rate, and now uh, that wicket, the the Warriors will feel that they might be just, just a teeny tiny little touch ahead. A little bit of a hole to bowl at now. They've got four wickets. Dayin Khalim coming in. High score of 74 against the Easterns back in the 2019-2020 season. Yeah, it's definitely not making with the bat. I mean, uh, when he plays for um, Harlow Queens Cricket Club here in Titans, he actually bats as high as four. The last game that he played is actually scored 92 for them in uh, the Titans Premier League. So he is a man that can uh, hold the bat. He does get a few deliveries uh, to get going. He does mm. take one or two, so this might just be the opportunity for the Warriors to build a lot of pressure around him. And maybe that will transfer back to Markram as well. Janssen getting the outside edge immediately. And the ball is running away for a fortuitous fall there yeah. for Khalim. I think Kalim will be looking at the innings that he played in the final of the T20 in uh, Porch when the Titans won it. He was right there till the end to win the game. And this is the kind of innings that will be needed from him today. Because after this, what we have is uh, Coben Bosch. He can hold the bat, but the one thing that you don't want to do is leave it up to the next batsman. He is the last uh, probably more recognized better in this batting lineup. Janssen coming into Kalim. Oh, firing it in. They would look to double up here with the Titans. Kalim just harboring along a little bit there. Mm. Taking the first one that quickly. Another two for the Titans. It's a good result to have. First two balls, you get to score six runs. Keep the momentum going mm. the way that uh, uh, Hendrik Klassen and Aiden Makram are going at it. And uh, Dian Khalim just comes in here, makes sure that he keeps the momentum going mm. after losing a wicket in that first ball of the over. I need some momentum going. 59 still required. And that's off 39 balls. Oh, he goes for a big one. Is this going to be a maximum? Yes, yes it, it is. is. Half a dozen. And Colin <laughs> says thank you very much. 
Wow. Great shot. <laughs> More than anything. I mean, that's just his dead ball. There's been a wicket in here. You're facing up to a Protea player and a brave shot to all six. And that six gets Herta Maloney dancing here in commentary. I love it when he goes straight downtown. Wow. What a lovely flow of the arms. Look at Khalim Didn't hold again. it back. Just a little shimmy in and just a lovely flow of the bat. Sixer. Marco Janssen will have something to say about that. Oh, and he has. He went for the short ball. Ooh. And Khalim says thank you very much. Oh, my God. A dozen in two balls. Thank you. Wow. An over that started so well for the Warriors. Getting a wicket. But the next four balls have went for 18 runs. So the Titans will feel, yeah, we lost the wicket, but it's a good over from the Titans. It's almost a good wicket to lose. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic striking by Dayan Khalim. And this is after me saying he normally takes a few deliveries to get into his stride. He says, what deliveries do I need? Well, he's, he's coming in with a bang. <laughs> this is also his first game uh, of the season. He doesn't oh. want to be dropped from the team. And he's uh, just putting his hand up there. Probably just saying, why did you not pick me for the other games? <laughs> Janssen coming in, and this oh. one <laughs> What a magnificent shot. Short arm slap, getting applause from Pendulo as well. And what an absolute statement by Diane Khalim. The biggest over of the match so far. 22 runs coming from that over. It looked like a bit of a, a flamboyant tennis shot there from uh, Diane Khalim hitting it. Oh through that cover. Let's have a look at it again. Oh, what look at it. Both feet of the ground and it just hits it uh, past that extra cover for a wonderful four oh. to end that over. That was wow. after you face it. Djokovic serve and you're just slapping it back into the corner of the front arm. Front hand. Oh, Ooh. lovely shot. Forehand. Four runs. Diane Khalim. 22 of five deliveries <laughs> and this came off Marco Janssen who is a Pratia bowler. Fantastic stuff by the young man. To be fair on, Khal on uh, Janssen he scored 56 runs so he's got 56 runs to play. Yeah. <laughs> Big appeal Sumetu. there. Yeah. Sumetu coming into the attack and uh, immediately Trishile interested in something. That ball just kept low. Might have felt that there was a little bit of a bottom edge on Markram's bat. I must say, it's good to see CS Metu also back. He started off a couple of seasons ago. Just another one and he hits it to cover. Started off a couple of seasons ago and he just almost disappeared in the system. Mm -hmm. And it's very good to see him back uh, for the Warriors bowling. The left arm orthodox, which is always golden to have somebody like that. So it's good to see CS Metu back in their fold. I would just love to see him take the pace off a little bit more because mm -hmm. he's almost bowling medium pace at the moment. <laughs> Just take the pace off, give it a little bit of time to turn and build up revolutions in the air. He's very flat, very quick. See that one just a little bit slow, it just get that little bit of extra kick. And it's almost more uncomfortably worked yeah. for the single. But how much pressure does this not take off the captain, Aidan Markram, with that gem of an innings thus far? No, definitely. I think uh, you'll be looking and say that I had a bit of a slow start. But, I mean, my partner on the other side is on 23 of just six balls. So, you know, a lot of pressure being taken off him as they take a quick single that time around. Um, that was swept to third man. It's a game of partnership. <laughs> wow. <laughs> game of the back of the bat. <laughs> Conventional sweep to third man from the right hander. I know we've got a, a, a Chinese cut. What cut is that one? Oh, that, that, that's when, you're, when your knife is a bit blunt. <laughs> oh, just giving a bit of a charge there. Oh, the adrenaline must be pumping oh, through Khalim's that. veins now. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, like you said, it's going to be very important for CS Metro to try and bowl it slower because when Janssen was going quick on the other side, he was just dispatching the boundary with ease. Again, just working it into that gap. Are they going to double up? Markram puts his head down. Fantastic running by the Titans captain and Diane Khalim. Great stuff. And uh, it has been fantastic. 146 for the loss of four after 15 overs. We're going to have a change in commentary as we're going to have the myth, the legend, the man himself joining KG 
It is Pindulo Makoban. Uh, thank you, Kat. That brings uh, the end to your commentary for the day. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to be working with you so far. They do, they do say that uh, older people need to sleep earlier, so <laughs> it's bedtime for you. I heard the pudding is ready, so I'm <laughs> Please leave some for us, young ones. <laughs> uh, you know yeah. how we like sweet stuff. Bendula, welcome back. Exciting times ahead uh, with five overs to go. As we see now, um, ah, we're just looking at that bowling card and seeing where are the li uh, Warriors going from here. And they've went to, to Van Yerden to come back into the attack. Hasn't had the best days, has Nilan Van Yerden. 35 runs from his three overs. Starts off a little bit straighter. Controls that one much more better because he's been very liable of throwing the ball down the leg side but mm. that's why now they have protection there a possible wicket taking option in a man standing at very short 45 yeah i think uh, the pressure or the way that the warriors their their plans would have been changed with the over that was bowled earlier by mohokani going for 19 runs and they they can't get too much uh, more overs out of him or oh, getting an inside edge well controlled this from Neil and Van Yerden. was a very expensive over from Mohakan and to think that there was an over more expensive than that one <laughs> which from is the one we see from, from Marco Janssen <clears throat> an over that had everything a wicket in the first ball four sixes twos yeah but uh, I think it's just one of those that the lesser experienced bowler won't be trusted to come back where the more experienced bowler you you got to always feel that he can come back into the game he is an ace and uh, I mean he's got 56 earlier on mm -hmm. drops it short it's not called so it counts as a leave from Diane Khalim well controlled this much better comeback from Neil and Van Nierzen. Yeah, very good, very good uh, the way that he started this over so far. And that's also building up from the previous over from CSC Metu, which only went for five runs. Mm. So it'll be good for them to, you know, bowl in pairs and make sure that they keep on maintaining the pressure on the betting team. Because 2020 is such a short sport, it literally takes you three really good overs to swing the pendulum to either side of the game. Mm. that over the top Ooh. Chinston Stubbs is a tall man and an excellent fielder but he just marshals that like an air marshal over the top for six great shot from Khalim yeah very good shot there from Dian Khalim Tristan Stubbs mis misjudged it early on he went in but then he realized that no it wasn't coming to me by the time he got back the ball went over as we see that once again from Dian Khalim comes in with a play just hooks it to Ooh. that cow corner for a for a six. That's 150 runs up for the momentum multiply titans. They need 31 from 26 now. Ooh, going for another big heave is Diane Khalim playing an explosive innings. 32 from 11 deliveries now. What an outcome. What a game that we have on our hands it nice Wednesday night uh, evening to be coming here it's as good as uh, being at home and watching a Champions League final yeah 100% <laughs> the vibe is living it's alive here at Centurion the stands have crowds the embankments have crowds the production team also has been quite good in this game we've really enjoyed thoroughly uh, bringing this game to the uh, the viewers back at home it's been absolutely sensational the batting the, 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 the exchange of runs from the momentum mm. multiply titans has really been the differentiator. Them being able to pick singles every now and then. Yeah. Like we see, three from this over plus that six means now that they need so little to get those runs. Yeah. They already have a partnership of 36. Yeah. Well, uh, the titans have got a show on here called Keeping Up With The Warriors. They're making sure that they keep on going and keeping up with the momentum, keeping up with the run rate, and just making sure that they are staying in this game and saying to the Warriors, hold on, you got two wins and two bonus points the last few games. It's time for us to put our stop to it. And it's very funny. With 29 runs to win, 24 deliveries, the extras from the Warriors are far less. Seven only. Siasimetu. 
He comes back, he's bowled with a lot of control, just 14 runs from his two overs. You can see the required run rate is too lesser than the run rate achieved. Mm. So the Titans are batting at a rate which will see them win this match if they continue. Mm. Ah, wonderful shot there from Aiden Makram just taking that down to long off. I think the Titans have put themselves in a position where they don't need to take too many risks in order for them to win the game. Where at the moment, those singles, those twos, and that odd boundary in and over or after two overs ago, but they keep on getting the momentum going, which is a good position to be in as the betting team. Oh, he's gone! Castled by Siasimetu. Dan Khalim's amazing innings has come to a close. Just going across the line there with CS Metu obviously bowling the left arm orthodox. Would have fouled that time by Dan Khalim that he should have tried to go straight as we take a look at that again. And uh, he was aiming for that cow corner. Completely missing it and that hit the off stump. And wonderful bowling from CS Metu. He has been creating the pressure with the way that he's been bowling. Bowling a lot of dot balls, not giving too much away. And that time around, he just got the reward that he was looking for. It's exactly what we were talking about earlier on KG. CS Metu comes in, a strong over. It's backed up by Neil and Van Nierten with his own strong over. He comes back, CS Metu now, and he's able to strike. You just need to keep that pressure starve the team of runs until they feel desperate to find runs wherever else yeah I think uh, Dian Khalim will look at it and be disappointed as you see Corbin Bosch coming in uh, to bet for the momentum multiply Titans and I think uh, Dian Khalim will look at uh, there was really no need at that time in the game just push it down for those ones um, but unfortunately that wasn't to be CS Metro goes to Corbin Bosch thing is if the momentum multiply titans go on to win this game as they're thinking of a second looking to hurry the situation they now need 27 from 20. if the titans go in to win this match you look at diane halim's innings and you're like yes that's it that's where the game was that's yeah. where the game changed yeah. and if they don't you think oh diane you did the job could you have just stayed in a little bit longer? And finish it off, not leave it for the next person. But also you look at Markram's strike rate, not really positive. Anchoring the innings. And he might feel a little bit under pressure now. 25 from 24 deliveries. Yeah. I do think though that I think the situation that they're at at the moment, uh, Makram will be looking at it and say, if I'm there until the last part of the game, we'll win this game. Because uh, there isn't too much to get. Yes. Markham yeah. is gone! What a catch! That is ridiculous! Matthew Bretzka with reflexes even a cat would be envious of. He snatches it from the air and gone is Aiden Markram. Wow, that's a match changing over. First getting a wicket of uh, Dian Khalim was going at around 300 to the uh, strike rate and then getting rid of the captain who was looking to bet right through to the end with a wonderful catch there from Matthew Brisky at that cover. Wow. As sharp as sharp can be, Siasime to cut through the Titans batting lineup, takes two crucial wickets and just for two runs in that over. You spoke about Marco Janssen's change earlier on being inspired. This is something of a different caliber for Siasime to yeah. Two set batters gone in one over. Yeah, very good timing of the game for him to get the wickets that he did and the over that he did. As we said, the over from him previously went for five runs, this one went for two runs and also coupled with two wickets. Wow, the Warriors will feel that yes, the Titans are above the, the required run rate, but with six wickets down, the Warriors would feel that we can get the, through with this one. It takes a couple of overs to change a game in T20 cricket. We took three overs to see the downfall of two crucial wickets. Now Marco Janssen has fresh meat to target. Corbin Bosch has faced one. Aaron Panguiso is still on zero. Here's Marco Janssen to Corbin Bosch. Oh, Bosch is found walking. Not a good shot, completely off balance. It was there to be hit though. Yeah.
Well, I guess Marco Janssen has so far went for 41 runs in his three overs, but he is a man that is experienced, he is a man that is a pro tier player, and you think at this time of the game, you want him to come back and make up for those 41 runs that he's went for in his first three overs. Really hasn't had the greatest night, but he looks to close it off with a bang here is Marco Janssen. Yeah, and as we have it, I mean, he's got two new batters to bowl at, and I think uh, that he'll be feeling very good about having only two bowlers to bowl at, uh, two two batters to bowl at. Well, to be fair, Marco Janssen in the uh, match against the Dolphins last came in in the 19th over. He was not looking, was very economical in that particular match. Came in and he took two wickets in one over in the 19th over. He's currently bowling the 18th. But Corbin Bosch is able to just nullify his threat and it seems like the Titans were on the money against Mark Janssen here today. Yeah, definitely. They were really good. But what better time for Mark Janssen to come in and uh, just swing it back to the Warriors side at the moment. And as you say that, we've got Aaron Pangiso who is on strike. <laughs> the last game when he played, he scored a 26 not out to win the game for the Titans. So can he do it again from the Titans? They might need something similar to what he did in that game. Just did it in nine deliveries as well. Yeah. <laughs> Two big sixes, one four in Aaron Pangi. So his match winning innings. Right now they need 26. He scored 25 undefeated. He needed nine deliveries for that 25. The Titans have 15 to play with. <laughs> but can he survive Marco Janssen? Oh, might be a problem, but he survives because the man who's at deep cover in Jordan Herman is just too deep for that. Yeah, I think uh, Aaron Pagius obviously is brimming with confidence uh, from his innings in the last match that he played. And a uh, first ball there just deciding that, you know what, um, after what I did in the last game, let me try and uh, do a similar job. Two deliveries left. Walks away and Marco Janssen just pushes it across the red line. He knows about it. So does the umpire and it signals wide. Yeah, it's a bit of a... I think it's, the game is still in the balance here yeah, due to the fact that the, the Titans are not too far away with the, with the run rate. Although the, the Warriors would feel that we only, we, they only have four wickets in hand and they would feel that they are ahead. Slaps that does Corbin Bosch. What an aggressive and menacing crunching shot that is. <laughs> He's, he literally fetched that from the fourth stump and it has found its way to the cow corner boundary for four. Wonderful shot there from Corbin Bosch. He can bet this fella, he can bet. <laughs> I need no more evidence than this replay you're about to see. Marco Janssen coming around the wicket. Tries to bang it short. It was so wide for him to do that. Now he goes a little bit straighter, does Marco Janssen, but there is Neil and Van Heerden who's standing at fine leg for one. Not a great night for the Protea. Not a night for him to remember. Going at over 11 runs, to, going at over 12 runs to the over even. Marco Janssen finishes on 49 runs with one wicket. The Titans now, so close. 19 to win from 12. Wow, I must say, very brave here from the Warriors uh, to keep CSC Matthew into that tech. He's been bowling really, really well. He's bowled three overs, only going for 16 uh, runs so far and picking up two wickets. But bowling in the 19th over, this is going to be an intriguing contest. This might work against. Ready? Good dive, this. Oh, he's found one thing! Sassy Metu fumbles the ball! Oh, that would have changed the game completely! <laughs> Superb fielding from Preska again! All that Simetsu needed to do was collapse and kick the bills off! You need to get the nerves, you need to get the nerves there! You need to get the nerves in check there, Sassy Metu! Yeah! Reverses the sweep and he does not need a run out! What exhilarating stuff at the end of the innings! Reverse sweep from Corbin Bosch is mistimed. Simetu dances with the timber. Why would he do that now? Wow. <laughs> wow. 
it's 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 amazing, isn't it, when you you watch the game of cricket and you wonder what goes through the batsman's uh, mind going for a reverse sweep instead of just going straight and getting some bet on it. Um, as we have a look at that again, uh, Coben Bosch had started to just. Uh, and this is why, KG, I said this might work with bringing Seattle. <laughs> and it's working. And they it's working. believe that this is a man we can get away. Why are they bringing a spinner in the 19th over? Let's hit him. But neither Coben Bosch nor Pangiso are set enough to take Simeto on, who is bowling brilliantly. He is bowling. He is having a very good oh, game. Yes, man. yes, Simeto. And I think uh, uh, the betting team, the Titans, are also playing into his hand here. Coben Bosch, knowing that he's probably the, the more recognized of the best men that are coming through, just gave his wicket away there. Ooh, the Titans now might be sinking in a hole. Junior Dala faces Simeto. He punches the ball and it goes for one. And Corbin Bosch is looking at it and said, if only I had done that. Yeah, now just putting a bit of pressure here. Um, just leaving it for the next guy instead of uh, trying to be there throughout the game to finish off the game. But uh, unfortunately, he just left it to the two bowlers in Aaron Pangiso and Junior Dalla. Oh. Pangiso needs his heroics from Durban. They are not there just as yet. Gets one. Junior Dala can rotate the strike. Is it rotation of the strike though that's required at this time of the game? Oof. <laughs> you, need, you need a boundary. Clearly there, not. There's, there's, there's ball. If the Titans have got a chance of winning this game, this ball needs to go for a boundary. Simeto might dart this one quicker. Which he has been throughout the rest of the day. Such a stark contrast between him and Tabray Shamsi. Shamsi much more slower through the air, looking to extract more turn. Much more aggressive as Simeto. And wow, we can see which one is reaping dividends. And with the last ball to go in the Palantimit over. Um, the Titans still requiring a further 16 of 7 balls. Ooh, and, uh, Aaron Pangiso tries to go across the line there and just doesn't get enough baton and goes down to that uh, cow corner for a single. What a phenomenal over from Siasimetu. Absolutely genius from the spin bowler who's been a revelation this season. And by finishing that style of bowling, that now records his highest or his best bowling figures in T20 cricket, beating the 3 for 25 that he got against the Tuskers in this very season. So that just exemplifies the type of season that Siasimetu is having. Finishing with 3 for 17. And now Bear Swanepoel needs to defend has to defend 15 more runs 15 more runs that he needs to defend uh, i think uh, with the way the momentum has been going uh, in the last four overs uh, the tight the warriors will feel that they're ahead in that regard oh they really might see us to really changing it with that three for 20. patrick true kruger's two wickets for 22 was also sensational many people would have thought he would bowl the 19th over but it was see to what a revelation change that was Bear Swanepoel has been going for less than six runs to the over and they need to get 15 out of him. Aaron Pangiso scored 25 from nine deliveries against the Dolphins. Can he do it again? That's the question. Ooh, here's Bear Swanepoel. Starts off with a full toss. If there's any delivery that you are going to hit away, it's that one. Because how often will Bear Swanepoel make that mistake? Yeah, especially with the way that the field is set up. You only have a, a, a cover and there's no long off. We feel that that's a ball that Aaron Pangi is aware of that he can hit it over those two men for a boundary. But it wasn't to be. And that brings Junior Dalla onto the strike. Ooh, the two gentlemen need to have a little bit of a conversation. It's not their job to do this, but their team relies on them to do it for them. What will Junior Dala do? Swanepoel, his job is just to maintain this over to be under 15 runs. Way more than capable of doing that, considering the fact that his three overs have just gone for 17. But he goes oh. under it, Junior Dala. Jordan Herman is at the deep. Oh. Oh. 
fumbles it. He's been so good as Herman, and only now he decides to make a mistake. Wow. And that's the time that the Titans would have needed that mistake to happen. And uh, as we see again, uh, Junior Tala just outside that off stump. Just that's regulation fielding. Oh, and he did so well to get to it. He got so to it so quickly. Was behind the ball, but he put in a, a, a dive, a slide there where you feel that it wasn't necessary. And that time around, that dive cost him some runs. Oh. And, uh, oh. Nine runs now from four balls. Still get a ball here from the Titans. Very much so. Junior Dala swings for the heavens again. Will stop. Brisker stops it this time. Okay. Some sanity coming back to the Duffer Bed Warriors. Matthew Brisker has been ridiculous in the field here today. Jordan Harman just wiping those hands, saying that won't slip again. Yeah, as we hear the uh, slow slap here from uh, so claps here from the the titans faithful they're really edging their betters to try it's only eight runs that you needed just two boundaries just give us two boundaries that's what the fans are saying out there yes wonderful another full toss but this time it's not really connected by aaron Pangi. so his luck is on his side today he gets two full tosses from Bear Swanepoel, but still cannot capitalize. Wow, I think uh, the Titans will be looking and saying that how much more chance do you need in this game? They've gotten two full tosses in this over, and both occasions, they only got singles from them. Ah, oh, they would feel... They would, wherever they are at the moment, they're not feeling too great about how this over is going. They need a boundary. And they and might get a boundary! They might get a a wonderful shot here from Junior Dana to oh. keep the Titans in the game. Wow, we've got a finish here at our hands. It's Woo. <laughs> a boundary. Man, now a boundary is definitely required <laughs> for this match to be won by the Titans. From out of nowhere, Junior Dala takes it out. Jordan Herman really had no chance with this one. And Woo. it's one more ball. <laughs> How did this happen? Where do you go? Where do you go? You think uh, a bit of a change up here? Maybe because it looks like Junior Dalla is very comfortable with the ball that's been ball very full. But on two occasions, he's hit it down there. Maybe, maybe, Bayer Sonopu might feel that, you know what? This is a lower order batsman. Let me try the shorter one out there. You've got people, you put people on the boundary and try the shorter one out there just to try and make him oh. feel a bit uncomfortable. But I think the full ball, Dala would feel very comfortable with facing anything that is pitched in his arm. The most difficult ball to hit is a Yorker outside the off stump. That is for me the hardest delivery to get runs off. Get a boundary off. Bale Swanepoel now needs to defend four runs. How did this get to this situation? There's open land on the offside. Bale Swanepoel, one ball remains. Junior, Aaron Pangi, so Junior Dala on strike. Great oh, delivery. That went through his legs. Super Oh, oh Junior Dalla would have found that she should have just stood in his crease and that would have been a wild ball. And that is a fantastic way to end the game. The Warriors come through, defending four runs in that last ball, and they managed to just come through. What a wonderful game of cricket we've had here today. It's been brilliant. I cannot believe, nor can anyone at Supersport Park here today, believe that this match came down to the very final delivery just like the blockbuster 13 run victory match in the four day series that left all of us biting our nails this one left everyone clapping everyone cheering everyone sitting on the edge of their seats and look at that titan start out saved Whew. and they win this match or the rather the, the warriors win this match and the Titans just need to lick their wounds a little bit. Wow, what a game we've had here. And I wonder if those physio backs have got uh, lower uh, the, the blood pressure pills just to take it down. Because that's how we're feeling in commentary here today. 
wonderful game that we've had here today. Mpendulo, just to wrap it up, how has the game been? A two-run victory. Two-run victory. How close will it be? Yes, the overlay says four, it's going to be fixed. But the game that looked so poised to be easy for the Titans. And then they just capitulated through bowling of the Warriors. And they crumbled through those two crucial wickets of Dayan Khalim and Aiden Markram. And, Aiden Markram and Devil Brevis. Just all of those wickets count. It was very close by Jordan Herman who almost gave it away. <laughs> But it has come to an end. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, the Titans will look back and say that there were at least two or three soft dismissals in their innings where at that time of the game, where the game was going, is that they didn't need to go. Um, I'm looking at the wicket of uh, uh, Rivaldo Monsami at the time where they were really controlling the game. Just gave it away a little bit there. And uh, obviously later on, we've got uh, Dian Khalim trying to go across the line and just missing it. And also um, Coben Bosch trying to go for that reverse unnecessarily so. And uh, I think the game that look also, they'll also look at the captain Aiden Makram to say that, you know, uh, but at 25 of just 25 balls, so it went a bit slower in that innings. But wow, what a game that we had here. Um, two runs, the difference between the two uh, teams. Wow, what a match. It has been excellent. If you are not coming to the grounds to watch this CSA T20 challenge, what are you doing? Look at this, Momentum Multiply Titans. Number two, number three, number four in Brevis Monsami, Markram, contributing well. Khalim really scared the socks out of the Momentum Multiply Titans until he lost his. 185 plays 183. And this is how it ends. Gahesho, what a great day. What a great day. What a great day. We've had uh, a very good day on the field with both teams competing very well. But equally, we've had a very good day with our production team here today i think pitch vision heads off to you you guys have really done well and uh we really put our heads off uh to the pitch vision uh the entire team the graphics that they've brought us i'm sure the viewers that are watching at home really really enjoyed the feed that we got here uh today at this match what a day of cricket what a night of cricket on a wednesday school night going to work tomorrow it was worth it to be at this game that's why you need to keep on tuning in that's why you need to keep on coming to the stadiums to catch this kind of action that we have here the people of Kabeha rejoice the people of eastern cape after winning the sa20 are still licking the licks or licking the fingers of victory three out of three wins in the home of the defending champions the momentum multiply titans in the other grounds in Kingsmead, the Dolphins trounced the, the DP World Lions by four wickets. So, it's just cricket everywhere. <laughs> we are back again on Friday for round number four of the CSA T20 Challenge. Where will you be? Will you be on YouTube? Will you be on Super Sports? Or will you be at the grounds? Let us know. We will see you wherever you will be. It has been the World of Champions Super Sports. Their YouTube channel bringing you this ball by ball broadcast from me, Bendulo, Gakhisha next to me. Known as KG, we're signing off. <laughs> it has been phenomenal. See you on Friday.